Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. How you feel, Hezekiah Walker? Yo, I feel good, man. You got superpowers, too? I do definitely got superpowers, because I look directly at the motherfucking eclipse. See, I figured it out, right? Talk to me. They tell us don't look at the eclipse, because that's how you get your motherfucking powers. See, now, honestly... That's the thing. That's what I'm trying That's to tell you. You know, you I'm know. Right at that motherfucker. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. And then everybody who didn't look at it is jealous. Why do you think Trump's got so many superpowers? Because he looked right at it, too. <laughs> sure. Also, all of us made fun of Trump like we didn't do the exact same fucking thing. I know y'all looked at it. I did it a couple times yesterday just because I forgot to put my glasses on. <laughs> hey, I, I don't even want to say what I did. What'd you do? <laughs> What'd you do, man? You held the baby up to the goddamn No, I clip. didn't do what? that. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes, you fucking no, did. No, I didn't. You fucking no, I did. did. I, thought, I, thought my, I thought my glasses were broke. So, okay. so basically, I looked up at the sun, and I didn't see anything different. And I was like, I don't think it started yet. Everybody's posting these pictures where it looks crazy dark. Oh, because different and you locations. you just see the sun. It only did that in Texas. It got no, crazy. I'm saying in New York. I ain't see that. They're shit. all taking pictures through the sunglasses. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know. Uh, so they sent me these pictures, and I'm like, is this shit only in Brooklyn? The fuck is wrong uh, with the sun? I'm in the got you, got you, got you, got you. So I didn't realize in order for the sunglasses to work, you have to stare directly at the sun. Right. Everything else is black. Then obviously I figured it out. I got mine from NASA. NASA sent me like three pairs of glasses. NASA ain't saying you should shut up. They did. I should have bought the letter. Say they what? sent me a whole like, NASA sent me three pairs of glasses, yo. NASA. I'm not even joking. Am I lying, Taylor? They sent that shit express to the motherfucking radio station. That shit got delivered on a Saturday. The mailman had to sign for it, bring it down. They had to use these three motherfucking glasses from NASA. Damn, I should have bought them shit with me, yo. Yeah. Y'all think I'm bullshitting. You are. That's, I promise on everything. All right. Anyway, so NASA gave me some fake glasses. NASA gave me three glasses. And um, that's what NASA's up to right now, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Send the Cancel glasses NASA, to the breakfast club. Cancel NASA. Well, no, they I, sent them, they sent them to Charlotte. So what? I got oh. you know what I got? I got some glasses from uh, Space Force. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Jealous, jealous. I even shouted jealous, the young lady out jealous, yesterday. Jealous. Oh. You're jealous. Damn, I look right I through my them. cowboy hat. This is how I watch the fucking solar eclipse. Right through the cowboy hat. Hey, like that. Mm -hmm. what's up with the cowboy hat? What's the significance? Uh, Taylor thinks that black people invented country music now. She can't um, just accept that black people are dick riding country right now. It's probably because she read this book. Mm -hmm. What is it? My Black Country: A Journey Through Country Music's Past, Present, and Future, which is in bookstores right now. That okay. seemed like a good setup. Can we burn this, Chris? Listen, Can we get to the bottom of burning this book? Thank you. We have to rewrite yeah. history. This is terrifying. <laughs> Excuse me. This is terrifying. <laughs> Please salute to my guy Bobby Bones. Bobby Bones, you know he's the big uh, nationally syndicated country radio personality. Of course, we know Bobby. Yeah, and I mean it's like. Fuck does he know about black country? Well, the banjo, music? the banjo is an African instrument. Um, talk to me, but is it made out of like parts oh, of instruments really, that white people it, didn't no, want? The banjo is an African <laughs> instrument. <laughs> Are you saying there's a soul food instrument? No, I'm, yes, a fried the, chicken guitar? The banjo is, is an African <laughs> instrument, and like the banjo is literally how country music started. The banjo. The banjo. Look it up. Let's I, I don't know if it was. Yeah, I'm telling you. Google it. Banjo. Wow. Banjo, how you spell banjo? Oh, is this this is this is written by Alice Randall. Alice Randall. Shout out to Alice. She's a professor at um at Vanderbilt, and she is the first uh black woman to ever write a number one country record. She wrote it for Tricia Yearwood. Yes, banjos. Few musical instruments are more deeply connected to the American experience than the banjo. The banjo was created by enslaved Africans and their white, white people can't invent nothing. And huh? their descendants in the Caribbean. White people and can't colonial invent North nothing. America. Here they maintain and perpetuated the tradition with a complex system of slave labor camps, plantations, and in a variety of rural, se rural settings, rural and urban settings. From the earliest references in the 17th century and through the 1830s, the banjo was exclusively known Stop. as an African American Stop. tradition with a West African heritage. Stop. What further <laughs> distinguishes Stop. The banjo Nobody is cares. that it did not come from Africa. Nobody cares. As is I, Aoki Lee Simmons tradition. is dating an old guy. <laughs> Aoki Lee Simmons is dating an old guy. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm te listen, you're not going to okay, take. Though. You're not going to take country from us. <laughs> we do. Right, white people invented rap. Shakespeare. Well, <laughs> white people invented rap. Look up the name of Taylor Swift's next album. Shakespeare. See, this is what y'all don't know. What? Brilliant idiots exclusive. I'm not even supposed to be saying this, bah, bah, bah. but I'm putting it out there. Bah, bah, bah. Beyonce and Taylor Swift uh. got a whole plot. Talk to me. To fuck up the game of music and America. What? Mm. 
Why do you think Beyonce... Pull, pull up the name of Taylor Swift's next pull, album. Pull it up, Taylor. Beyonce just dropped the country album Damn. called See how Cowboy it. Carter. Okay. Right? And Taylor's about to drop. What's the name of Taylor Swift's next album? Look it up. What is the... That's not... That was her last album. What is Taylor Swift's She's next album? She's dropping in May. Put Taylor, put Taylor Swift new album in May. Taylor Swift new... What's it called? The Tortured Poets oh, Department. I the know. To the Tortured Poets Society. The Tortured Poets Society. Department. Department. The Tortured Poets Department. What y'all think she gonna be doing? Rapping. Rap, rap, rapping? Mm. Huh? Taylor Swift about to fuck huh? the game up. Beyonce dropped the country album called Cowboy Carter. Taylor Swift is about to drop an album called what? Dead Tortured Presidents? Poets okay. Department. Society. It's going to be a rap album. Rap. Bars. Why? Bars. Why not? Bars. Uh -huh. What do you mean why? Why You ain't say why when Beyonce yeah, dropped country. not a rapper, though, either. Don't matter. It don't she's, matter. She's, she's doing white shit, so now Taylor's going to do black Be shit. Yeah, Beyonce went to a genre, and yep. Taylor Swift's going to another yep. genre. And it's going to be fire. And nobody got bars like her. And it's smart to call it poetry so she don't have to rap. So she don't have to. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Hey, but she, she's rhyming her ass off. Mm. Bars. I heard some of it. I'm not even joking with y'all. Think I'm bullshitting. No, I heard fine. some of it. She's rapping. Tell me, her tell me. Ass off. Tell me what you're hearing. What you're hearing. Listen to me. Tell me. Bars. Bars. I don't days. know who the fuck she got writing for her, but she's snapping. She's snapping. She, she writes her own shit. She writes she's, her own shit. No, no, no. Not these raps. That's the track list for the new album. My boy only breaks right. his favorite Fortnite toys. Featuring Post oh. Malone. Who 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 album is who album is Post Malone on right now? Talk about it. Who album is Post Malone on? Talk about it. Beyonce. Huh? Beyonce. Huh? Dunks. Okay. The torture poets department. My boy only breaks his favorite toys. Uh. Down bad. Yeah. What else? No long London. But daddy, I love him. Fresh out the slammer. You think that's not gonna be a rap record? That's a rap record. Fresh out the slammer. Come also, on. butt daddy with two D two T's is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Why she spell butt daddy with Executive two T's? Executive produced by <laughs> Diddy. Okay. Yo. All right. Hold on. You skip over side C. Side C. Guilty as sin. I mean, Who? that's definitely. Come on. Who's, Who's afraid, afraid of, of the little, little me? me? Definitely. I, I can fix him. No, really, I can. What's that one called? L-O-M-L. -L, love of my life. Mm. I'm trying to think which one I heard. Scro scroll down, Taylor. Side D. I can do it with a broken heart. The smallest man who ever lived. The alchemy is produced by the alchemist. That's the one I heard. 100%. It's produced by the alchemist. And what's the other one? Sierra Bow Wow. <laughs> That's what that says, right? What does it say? <laughs> Clara Bow. Okay. Oh, Clara Bow. And the bonus track is the manuscript. Oh. It is a uh, duet with her and Beyonce barring it, barring it up. It's just straight bars. Barring it up. On it's some really like, straight Jada Kiss Styles P shit. That's oh, it. I thought you were going to say first that. person shooter. Man, whoa, 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 <laughs> yo, whoa, yo, whoa, yo, whoa, yo, whoa, yo, whoa, yo, whoa, yo, whoa. I mean, first person shoot, they weren't going back and forth. Like, Styles and Jada go, like, bar for bar. Like, oh, Taylor yeah. and Beyonce are going bar for bar. But just remember, you heard it there first. Beyonce dropped the country album, Cowboy Carter. Take over, Taylor Queen. Swift is dropping a rap album called, what's it called? The de Department of Twisted Motor Poets Vehicle. Department. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> the Tortured Poets. The Tortured Poets yeah, Department. Don't say it like that, hater. This is a rap album. It's Yo, it's Why? crazy how the ego you boost. Like, you sound that like white people got. talking about Beyonce in country. Why? No, it's, no, yeah. no, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I really don't. I yeah. Because Beyonce. I can say yeah more times. You can say no. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed, Andrew can exhaust you before you exhaust it. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. yeah. Guaranteed. Come on. Son. Come on. You Guaranteed. gonna quit? Beyonce I'll quit first. She made a song before, and that's what gave her. Um, nah. You all lost. You lost already. Daddy's little, you daddy's lost little already. girl. That was a country song already. You lost her already. So yeah, what, what did you call her again before the pod? The Incredible Bolt. <laughs> I feel so safe with Taylor. <laughs> it's 76 <laughs> degrees. We're taping this on Tuesday. It's 76 degrees. Taylor got the guns out. Guns you know, out. Really, guns out. You really do got to have guns out. Girl. Girl. You a cowboy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Look at you, my little ranch God hands. Danger. <laughs> for I real. Shout out to Taylor. I'm going to be bumping flex. that shit all spring and all summer. Taylor, yeah. we need that flex. For, we need that flex for the camera. Guys, it's Come so on. Annoying. Put Woo! pressure on. <laughs> you got steroids. Yo, you <laughs> <laughs> 
What? Don't do that. Nah, you're That's not a on trick steroids. for me. You're not Why? on Because when I was in elementary school. They thought they you were on steroids? Yes! I was bigger than them. No way. <laughs> but I had more muscles than them. It's crazy. You ain't been bigger than nobody. Else. <laughs> no, 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 come on. I, I had more muscles than the world. just be making uh, shit up. Uh, he uh, makes uh, shit up and we believe it. Every week. Steroid every week we believe it. I promise you. They called you young steroid in elementary School? No, you don't want to call me young. You always put the young in front of it. So they just no. call you steroids. They call you no, steroids? No, they just be like steroids. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll be mad when Yo, I put them in the night. The incredible bulk. Oh, my bulk. God, man. The incredible bulk <laughs> is in the <laughs> building. Damn. No, uh, I, I used to be mad diesel when I was younger. Steroids. I believe it. I, I believe asked it. my mom. She used to, I used to just go in the monkey bars and then just like. Come on. <laughs> what the fuck was your mom for? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> don't make me. Come on. It might have been something. Y'all got to <laughs> just chill with all that. Yo, that's, you was doing pull-ups on the monkey bars? Yo, no, but I just was a very energetic kid. So I, I did Olympics. And, or not Olympics. I'm sorry. I did yo, gymnastics. <laughs> I did yo. gymnastics a lot and stuff. So it was just. What grade was this? I was in elementary school. All right. Okay. All right, cool. Shout out to Taylor, man. <laughs> yo, um, speaking of, where we want to start? Man? I don't know, man, but Taylor, <laughs> yo, first of all, we love you. We appreciate you. That's it. All we ask is you take it easy on that keyboard, pushing your fingers Shut straight up. through the goddamn computer man, like man, you've been you doing. Something, you really are. You need to chill what out. What does that say? The power to what? Power to the Holy Ghost. What is that? I don't want to say. All means necessary. Go to J. Cole Responds, man. Okay. okay. Let's get right Let's to it, yo. Let's get right to it. Yeah. Um, Let's do that. J. Cole, let's hear what J. Cole, this is J. Cole in <laughs> Yo, response. Son, this is J. Cole this, at Dreamville this Fest. Tweet, this tweet is. This, this is my 911. This is my 911. Oh, this is my 911. Yo, come on, Sean. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I didn't see the slash. What's your thoughts, Shops? Um, <clears throat> okay. I thought, okay, there's this conversation like who's the best in the game? It's, is it Kendrick, Drake, or J. Cole? Mm -hmm. First of all, like, I, I'll listen to J. Cole do features on songs, and I'll be like, holy shit, this guy, the best rapper alive. He's so fucking talented. He's amazing. He also seems like an incredibly likable dude. Like, he's kind, he seems like kind, good-hearted, like, has people's inten good intentions uh, on his mind. Um so there's all this positivity around him. I don't really think he has any enemies. Most people like working for him. He likes to uplift people. But I've never thought that he was really in the conversation with Drake or uh, Kendrick. or Kendrick. I, I, I yeah. and and furthermore, I don't think he really wanted to be number one. Like uh, the the analogy I made of flagrant was like it was like Snapple. Like, Snapple likes being number three. It made a whole marketing campaign about being number three because you could take chances with number three. Like, also, within his fans, he's number one, and that's all he cares about. And I think that he's actually in a position that is way more emotionally satisfying. Trying to be number one is trying to convince people that don't even like you to acknowledge you're the best. I don't think anybody even tries to be number one. I, uh, think, you, I, think, I think you compete. I think you compete. You put out your best material, and people crown you that. Now, I think once you get that, you, you want to stay there, mm -hmm. but I don't think you initially start like, I want to be number one. Fair, fair, fair. Maybe not initially start. Mm -hmm. Right. But like, I, again, I don't know Drake personally. My assumption is Drake knows he's number one and he likes being number one. And on some, at some point in his life, he's like, I want to be the undeniable greatest rapper alive. And that. then he went and achieved that. Jay too. Jay, I feel like Jay at some point Absolutely. said that. That's why he put out an album every year. 100%. He stayed in the mix. Relevant. I'm talking about for a decade or better. Same Without thing with Drake. So I think what happens is J. Cole was truthful. Like, he misstepped. He did something to uh, try to achieve a thing that he actually doesn't really want. And putting himself in that line of fire for a thing he doesn't really want was emotionally unsettling. Again, this is pure assumption. I don't fucking know the guy at all. But he realized, oh, this is not the life I want to live, where I'm worried about a diss track coming out. I'm worried about what the internet says. I'm worried about all this public scrutiny. I like being Snapple. I like chilling in the cut where everybody loves me. Everybody thinks I'm great. Everybody thinks I'm underrated. And they just keep on saying how amazing I am. I make tons of money. My fans think I'm number one. So that's all awesome. The only thing that comes with this, this new uh, achievement, if you will, is stress. I have everything I need without that. Fuck it, I'm pulling out. I shouldn't have done it. It's not something I even want in the first place. I'll let those two guys who clearly want to fight for it, I'll let those two guys who clearly want to fight for it battle it out, but that's not up to me. 
What do you think? I agree with everything that you just said. I, I watched it live because, you know, Nyla and, you know, Wayno and Speedy and um, uh, Amber Grimes, they were doing the, 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 they were doing like broadcasting throughout it. And so I was just sitting at home and, and Nyla was like, yo, you watching the live broadcast? So I, ha- I happened to, I turned it on. And when I turned it on, Cole was performing. It was like right before he bought out Earth Gang. So I saw the whole thing live. And as I was sitting there, it's two trains of thought, right? The hip hop fan in you is like, Oh uh, yeah, but then I'm like, nah. What's wrong with what he did? Like, if because I'm listening to the words that came out of his mouth, he said it bothered my spirit. Yeah, he said it made me realize how good I've been sleeping over the last decade. And here's the thing, you know why it bothered J Cole's spirit? Because he lied. Talks man. Because he got on a record. And said some things that he knows is not true. Said some things that he don't believe just to appease the motherfucking internet. Just to appease his boys. Not to appease himself. Not to appease himself. To appease the bloodlust of the internet. That's right. People that don't even care about him. His fans care about him. Bro, it was ridiculous from the jump. First of all, he goes, Kendrick Lamar fell off like The Simpsons. Wow. A show that's worth like forty billion dollars. Not, I'm not exaggerating. Right. It's literally worth like forty billion dollars, and it's been on for thirty five years. Please let me fall off like that. <laughs> like that. That's number one. Yeah, yeah. Then number two, the one thing you cannot make fun of in regards to Kendrick is his catalog. He's the guy it's that undeniable. takes three years, four years, five years to perfect, uh, to, to create a body of work that people will enjoy, and you may not get it in that moment, but eventually you will appreciate that timeless work of art. Good Kid, Mad City is a classic album to me. Mm-hmm. To Pimp a Butterfly is my favorite Kendrick Lamar album. That's a classic to me. I think that album ushered in, you know, blackness in music again, like just in, 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 in overall. Fucking We Gonna Be All Right was the, was the soundtrack for the, all the black movements from, from, from the time it dropped. Damn, I, I don't think Damn is a classic, but I think it's a really great album. J. Cole said that was the peak of Kendrick's shit. So that means he thinks it was that. Mm-hmm. He said the last album was tragic. I totally disagree. I love Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. I've said numerous times in the future they're going to look at that album and Jay-Z 444 as the two most important hip-hop albums of all time because it showed real growth. It showed real evolution of men. So I know Cole for the type of artist he is, the type of person he seems to be. He's, you're lying to the people. You literally put out a bunch of narratives about Kendrick, downplayed his greatness as a as a, as an artist, just to appease these goddamn unhealed heathens on social media. I know that didn't sit well. With and you. they'll never be appeased. Never. They'll never be happy. Never. Because they don't care about you. This isn't. Those aren't your fans. Your fans are the fifty thousand people that came to Dreamville. Dreamville. That's right. Those are your fans, and those people. They would be totally fine if you're like, honestly, Kendrick is nice. I really like him too, which is his genuine energy. That's right. I guarantee he probably looks at Kendrick and he goes, man, this guy's so fucking talented. Bro, they, were, they talked about doing collaboration novels together. He's yeah. always bigged up Kendrick. That's how I know you lying. You don't, when I heard the record last week, I said, he don't even believe what he's saying. Boom. He's only saying that shit for the internet. Man, you will always go wrong when you try to appease the internet. You'll go wrong when you try to appease anybody except for yourself. That's why when he said mm. it doesn't sit well with my spirit. Respect. I don't got nothing else to say. Respect. Who am yeah. I to tell him, yo, he's wrong. I want to see you battle this and that. No, you want to see him get his head knocked off. What do they tell you when you get in the boxing ring? If your heart ain't in it, get the fuck out of there if you yeah. get your fucking head knocked off. Or, or more importantly, it's like, you know, what do people really want to see when you're watching a, uh, a NASCAR race? What do you really want to see when you're watching Formula One? That's right. You want to see the crash. You want to see the crash. A lot of people, they're not tuning in just for you to go around in circles. That's right. They want to see the crash. That's right. So they're not really caring about you if you're the driver. That's right. You're like, you're just like, dance, entertain me, clown. So imagine if Kendrick, imagine J. Cole doesn't apologize. And that's why he, if one thing he said in there, he goes, and yo, man, if you want to get your lick back, I got my chin out. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, go ahead, do what you do what you think. Yeah. Because he's like, there's nothing Kendrick said. Real, because Kendrick, we are we gonna get to that in a second. Cole just caught some strays. Yeah. There's nothing Kendrick said, and you can't tell people how to respond. But why would you respond in that manner, Cole? Yeah. All you got, all Cole had to do was get on there and spit some dope ass boss. Mm-hmm. If I was him, I would have got on there and been like, damn. 
Because it's like Kendrick Glass album is about therapy and healing. I'd have been like, yo, sound like you ain't been to see your therapist in a while. Boom, done. Like, yo, bro, let me, let, you might need to go talk to your oh. therapist. Like, some, take that angle. Yo, you that's You know what I'm fire. saying? Like, you, yeah, I thought you was the healed one. Like, I would have took, took that angle. You sound a little angry on this record. I would have went, I would have took that route, but kept it like just about rap. Yeah. For you to try to spin the narrative that Kendrick fell off, yeah. which is a lie, right? That his his catalog ain't what it is. That's a lie. That was a whack approach. Very yeah. whack approach. <laughs> Agreed it's a whack approach. Why did he put it out then? Because if it doesn't sit, he felt that it didn't sit well with him two days after he put it out. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he recorded that more than a sure. day before the album came out. But we all, so it's we, like, we, I think what didn't sit well with that was... Um, the reception it got and how people were saying it was a weak track and that's probably what didn't sit I, I don't believe that. Like, I've done things, like, I, I'll tell y'all all the time about the time I played the Floyd Mayweather audio. Yeah. I didn't have no reason to play that other than I'm hearing 50 Cent and Jimmy Kimmel and Nelly and all the people talk about how Floyd can't read. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck that. We ain't went viral in a couple of days. <laughs> Literally, we ain't went viral in a couple of days. Everybody in the studio told me not to play it. I played it. Hmm. Soon as I played it, soon as that energy went into the universe, it wasn't no backlash. It wasn't nobody outside wanting to fuck me up. Yeah. It wasn't nobody calling me in the office to tell me I shouldn't have done that. Immediately, me, mm -hmm. my spirit felt fucked yes. up. Yes, so immediately, as soon as he recorded that verse or that song, why didn't his spirit because, feel bad? Because he, probably, because he probably had a bunch of external noise around him his boys in the studio other people he let hear it he's like yeah man put that shit out throw that shit on the tape man fuck that do that shit whatever whatever and then it's out and now you like fuck two days go by you start and, and, and by when y'all say when y'all say uh reception i don't think it was the reception to the record because there's plenty of people who like the bars i didn't like them nah. but i think the reception is Man, these motherfuckers really spit are spending two days trying to downplay the greatness of Kendrick Lamar. Let's talk about that for a second, too. How these motherfuckers really just dick ride based off whatever their fucking timeline tells them to. Mm. How dare y'all all of a sudden start questioning the greatness of Kendrick Lamar because J. Cole lied to y'all. <laughs> J. Cole yeah. lied to y'all and told y'all this album wasn't good and that album wasn't good and these projects That's... that y'all liked, but... y'all started questioning. Then 40, this, this, this too, J. Cole starts trending. J. Cole won, Kendrick zero. In less than 48 hours, now nah, you ain't even in the big three no more, J. Cole. Yep. J. Cole, you suck. J. Cole, you trash. What does that tell you about the era we live in? Well, Fuck everybody. Do you. Well, Fuck these yes, fickle motherfuckers. Yes, 100%. But it, what, I think what it speaks to is it's not that the people are fickle. It's that the people are doing exactly what you're suggesting the artists do. The people just care about what they feel. Yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. those people that you're talking about are probably Drake stands that want to make Kendrick radioactive, that want to chip away at Kendrick's greatness because Kendrick came at Drake. So when J. Cole said anything, if J. Cole said, oh, hey, you're Kendrick, right. oh, hey, yeah. you're a poopy face, they would go, he do got a poopy oh! face. I always thought he looked like the shit emoji. Exactly. <laughs> well, and then they put that out there in the world because it, it feeds their emotions. That's right. But those people aren't J. Cole fans. Those people are Drake fans. And that's, I've realized how the internet works in a lot of ways, which is like, if you are championing, you've, you've experienced this all the time. That's right. If you even, if you champion an idea of one group without even realizing that that group cares about it, they will ride for you and rally. Okay. You say one thing that's critical of the Democrats. You could sure. say 10 things that are positive about Democrats. One thing is critical, Fox News radio host Charlemagne the God yeah, yeah, comes yeah, yeah. out in support yeah. of blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All the different groups. And then when you say one thing that goes against what they say, those right. same organizations right. go, this guy, radio host Charlemagne God, is out of his fucking mind. They yeah. don't care about you. Yeah. You are there to either support or refute their opinions. That's right. And depending on what you do, you are a hero or a villain. That's right. And it's just, it's really interesting. That is, the internet has so many amazing things, it's given me a career. It's definitely helped you with your career. I love it, it's incredible. But what it has done is emboldened these little echo chambers and no knowledge, no information, no truth even has to enter the echo chambers. None. I, by the way, it can be right there. It can be the truth. Yeah. Like if I, we just, I, I'm watching Trump do this right now with abortion. Trump is like, I'm pro-choice. I'm pro-life. 
And, both, and I'm against abortion. And both both yeah. groups he's are like, utilizing. Like, 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 she's putting three things out there. I'm pro-choice, right? Our, our, I'm pro-life, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm anti-abortion. He's got all of those things out there. And based on whatever you feel, you know Trump is pro-choice. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Listen. Boom. No, yeah. You know Trump is pro-life. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Listen. You know Trump is anti-abortion. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Listen. Yeah. What do you do with that, Schultz? <laughs> well, I mean, that's the most amazing thing about it. It becomes so easy to manipulate because based on the people that you want to manipulate, you can use whatever version of that person you want. And the reality is those people that are being manipulated don't know enough about him to refute it. That's right. They just become, people just become heroes and villains in your world. So if you hate the, the Republicans, for example, the Republicans are awful. Trump is just this villain in your world and there is always a reason to hate him based on what you believe. Absolutely. And the same thing goes for Joe Biden. If you are somebody who hates the uh, the Democrats, there's always something Joe Biden has done to just infuriate Absolutely. you based on your feelings. Yeah, I listened to a, a, a montage somebody put together of Trump switching his stance on abortion throughout the years. And I'm like, you could do that with any politician. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could do that with any politician. You know, I, I could take Joe Biden, Barack Obama, and have them sounding like the most homophobic, anti-gay marriage people. Like, I, if I wanted to. Imagine us. We talk every single day for hour, every single week for hours upon hours. You could take any single thing. Please don't. I mean, yeah, don't. <laughs> Please, you've done it enough. Yeah, 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 How yeah. much more can we take? Yeah. <laughs> but but it, it, I think it is interesting, like, we were talking about this on, on uh, we were talking about this on on, on Flager, but I but I think that this is interesting. I think we our age group is very specific in the way that we consume information. In that, like our parents, I was talking to Joe about this a little bit. Our parents fall for phone scams. Mm -hmm. Okay, for example, someone calls my mom and goes, "Hey, by the way, you were offered a ten thousand dollar rebate. All we need is your credit card information, and you'll get that rebate." And if, if someone calls my mom and does that, my mom might give them all the information and then they go run up charges on the credit card because she came from a time where if you called your house, you probably had a reason and they had your information yeah, yeah, and there was a reason yeah, yeah, to trust yeah, yeah. it. We looked at those scams and we're like, how the fuck could you fall for this? This is ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, we fall for headlines Lord, in the same way our parents fell for phone scams. It's disgusting. Right? Yeah. We see a headline and we're like, Joe Biden makes... Easter Trans Visibility Day, right? And we go, well, that must be true. It's a headline. You do some reading. We, we don't read. We don't read shit. Right? But here's my, here's my thing. This is what I believe. I believe our kids and the kids that are alive right now will, will be raised with the same scrutiny for headlines that we have for phone scams. They should. Um, because they're going to yeah. see so many lies and so much misinformation and that they're they're going to, because right now I'm at the point where if I read any headline that sounds even remotely too good to be true, I know it's fake. So that's all they've known. All they've known that, are YouTube titles their whole life. That's so interesting because they might grow up just believing their truth. And I think that's kind of where you should be as a human. I'm talking about your truth. Oh, oh. Like, like the things that you know to be true, you mm. personally, mm. just you. I'm talking but about- even that's manipulatable. Yeah. But forget what you're taking in. I'm just talking about what you believe. Like, give me examples like, so Like, for example, that. you wake up in the morning, you know you're in your, your house. Ah, uh, uh, I thought you're you're talking about your truth, like no, no, no. Forget what you're taking. Right in. No, 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 okay, no, 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 no. Just your existence. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe yes, yes. that's what it's going to take. Us just internally yep. relying on our existence because we know everything on the external is manipulated. Bro, this is it's so funny you said this. Like uh, we, we, on Rogan, we're like going over and over, like how fucked the system is and you know the pharmaceutical companies are influencing government and all the cia is doing all these things and it's so daunting that you almost like drown in how much you have to change in order to like write the course it, it, the reaction is either do nothing or and i think you've maybe even spoken about this like the impact maybe that we should be trying to make is like locally like fix your community, mm. fix your block, yeah, yeah, fix yeah, your yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. Maybe after you fix your neighborhood, fix your town. Fix Maybe, yourself. Well, yes, yeah, start here. Yeah. But then like, if you can fix on the small scale, you can probably really change and impact like your life and the lives around you. And then you would hope that that continues. But trying to go to the top and be like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change the CIA. Right. I'm going to change the pharmaceutical. You're not. No. You're it, not. It, 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 it might happen if enough of us try to do it. But- 
maybe the goal should be changing the smallest thing and letting that disseminate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does that make sense? It makes yes. perfect sense. But then you're a Karen. Ooh. You're a Karen? That's an interesting point. Like, by trying to complain and change the things in your local community like there being too many black people, they'll call you a Karen. Is that what you're saying, Chris? Maybe not that example specifically, oh, okay. but... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I look, my father organized a town watch when I was a kid. I used to drive around with a police scanner with him in the car. We were I very... Knew you was a fed. What? what? <laughs> I always knew you was a fed, local, Chris. Local, not fed. Local. But like... <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> We did that. Like, it, he did that. And it was a sense of, like, you're going to, this is the parameters of our community, and, like, you take care of that. And I think now anyone who, like, kind of, and look, I know with the Karen specifically, it, you know, there's another dynamic to it. But, like, I, I do sense that that is actually the right way to go. But maybe because of the internet, people are afraid to do it because no matter what you do in a lot of these situations, it's getting filmed, you're being judged. And I think bro, we got to stop worrying about that. We, The reason I say I think we got to stop worrying like about the that. The internet has become Karen's just crying about, about everything. everything. They clip every little yes. thing and cry yes. about it. Yes. You're a bunch of yes. fucking white ladies banging on doors in the neighborhood. Yes. It fucking, yes. what is going on? Somebody asked me that earlier. They asked me about, um, you know, just how much I get taken out of context, yeah. right? Literally, they, they was like, and they was like, because you say things, like, but and you you have to know what the right is going to do with them. And I'm like, sure, but should that mean I, does that mean I shouldn't say them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I am I supposed to not critique Listen. the Democrats? Am I not supposed to give here's, my opinions on DEI and the workplace? Am I not supposed no. to have these conversations here, here, just here. because I know what they're going to do with them? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Ten years ago. We didn't know what a hit piece was. Ten yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. a news article came out yeah. about you, and it was, we assumed it was the truth. This came out in a magazine. This must be the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we know there's such thing as a hit piece. Andrew Huberman is going through this right now. The you know, the doctor Andrew Huberman, right? But no, now what do you do? Uh he's, he's like the most uh famous um uh doctor in terms of like uh Disseminating uh, research and uh, new data and results about new methods for health and okay. wellness and sleep and ways that you can be a healthier person. Gotcha. And he's, you know, getting huge popularity. And then I think the New Yorker, or a couple other magazines, were to put this hit piece out on him. Mm -hmm. Didn't even research the person that they got the information for or from or knew about it and then actually omitted it. And had they known, they definitely should not have put this out. But that will all be coming out or is already out right now. But anyway, point is. Now, since we're so used to hit pieces, we're so used to things we've seen. We've seen it come out about Dave Portnoy. We've seen it about, come out about Rogan. We've seen it come out about all these people. Now there is such a thing in our brain called the hit piece. So the second we see it, we go, oh, this is an information. This is a hit piece. This yeah. is a specific piece made to, made, <clears throat> made to make somebody look bad. And you right? have all these small hits. Like It's not like one publication will do it. Now it's all of these different people online. So, so here's my thing. I wonder if we're in this age right now where there are people that are seeing things being taken out of context for the first time and they're just like, oh, this is the truth. This is who Charlemagne is. This is who Andrew is. These, these are who these people are. Mm -hmm. We're just the first wave. Once the internet catches up and it catches up fast, all of a sudden, all these videos will lose their value because the audience will start to go, oh, this is that style where you take somebody out of context yes, and you make them look bad yes. for clicks. Yes. Like Unfortunately, those, we're the first wave of it, or the first generation yeah. of it. But I think after a while, the audience gets savvy. Like those videos where they can, they'll take, like like I, like the Daily Show, I'll do a six minute clip on the Daily Show. And they just take 30 seconds. They'll take 30 seconds, 45 seconds a minute and talk <clears throat> in between the things that I'm saying. You can create any narrative with that. Mm. Bro, we did it with RFK. We had RFK on the pod and then fucking, uh, who was it? It was... Uh, Colbert and Jimmy Fallon both took it out of context, made the exact same joke. Like RFK was talking about how he had horrible people over at his house. He's like, I had OJ, I had uh, the fuck Harvey Weinstein, I had all these things. It's like I was in New York at this time, and you know I was a kind of famous person, so people hung out. You don't realize they're pieces of shit until you find out later. I would have never invited them over, and I knew they're pieces of shit. That was his point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. go take out the part where he goes, they're all pieces of shit. I would have never known. And they just go, why are you bragging about having pieces of shit at your house? Oh, my God. But the people will get savvy to it. 
I hope so, man. And just like we stop trusting headlines, we'll stop trusting the hit no, pieces. No, you're right. They will. Because even when Elon Musk retweeted me from Daily Show the other day. That was sick. And and it, the head, the caption was, uh, and I mean, I did say it, so I can't act like I didn't say it. I was like, I was talking about corporate, I was talking about DEI initiatives in the workplace. Yep. And I was saying how a lot of them are mostly trash. They're performative. You know, it's, it's a lot of symbolism over substance. You know, yada, yada, yada. Protect the company, not protect the actual yeah, people. That's exactly what it's about. It's, yeah. And I said Great. all of that. It's about protecting the Great company, piece. not protecting people. So he retweets that. And it's the, the Charlemagne the God says, DEI is well-intentioned, but mostly garbage. <laughs> right? So you see people in the comments saying, Elon, he's he's calling you racist in this piece, bro. Which I didn't say. I didn't say Elon Musk is racist, but I guess they're saying Elon Musk types. So it's people that know that what y'all think this is, it's not. But what scares me is when you see the smart people who you think should know what it is still take it and manipulate it for their own gain. Because that's really all it's about. Yes. It's not about really trying to put it's their game. the correct information out there or, yeah. or, or move the conversation forward. Because at the end of the piece, I go, look, I don't know. I, I know a real DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, is going to come from real black leaders and real black movements. I don't know how to do it because I'm not a black leader. Mm -hmm. So you know what I would do for the people who are in that space? Take that baton and elevate the conversation. That's it. Instead... They rather turned it into a Charlemagne hit piece because that's what garners them clicks. Of People course. like conflict for clicks. I mean, it's, it's just, just the what lowest, it is. It's the lowest common sense. If you can't create, you have to destroy. Yep. Right? If yep. you want attention, but you don't have the ability to yep. create, you have to destroy. And that's destruction right. is the easiest form right. of entertainment, right? That's if right. there's a fight on the street, we're going to go watch it. If somebody's lambasting somebody on the corner, we're going to go check it out. If there's a video exposing right. somebody, we're going to go watch it. Like, right. this is just what we're drawn to. If you could create, you would never do that because the satisfaction you get from actually making something yourself is amazing. It's it's the serotonin right. rush you get. And there's, a, and there's people who just simply had smoke for Elon. Don't like Elon. And so if Elon it, retweets it and agrees, they fuck have... Fuck you. Fuck me. We got to make him radioactive so it doesn't look like he's making sense. But you could still say fuck Elon if you actually listen to the piece. Instead of probably just looking at the head, <laughs> looking at the clip. Care, like, e like, like, uh, like Elon probably did. I don't think Elon listened to that full six minutes. Maybe but, he did, maybe but if he, he did. Maybe if he did, maybe he didn't. But if he, if he, if he uh, didn't, if you did, then you can say, hey, Elon, you're agreeing with this, but... You need to actually go listen to it. You can still make your point yeah. without saying fuck me is yeah. what I'm saying. Yep. But I don't have a problem uh, with people saying fuck me. We got here from J. Cole, though. <laughs> Moral of that story is I don't have a problem with Trey getting out the car. No, no. This is... <laughs> the, the, don't let me out. Okay, so... What Cole was saying was, Drake, let me out. I'm out. I'm Drake, great. let me out. Y'all fight this out. I want to be number three. Ricky Day. <laughs> I'm not in this, man. Yeah, yeah. I ain't, I'm not home. Got the heart to do this. Yeah. I don't want to do it. It's not in my spirit to do it. I don't want to have to kill nobody or attempt to kill nobody. Yeah, Drake, let me out. Mo and I think most people won't. Most people haven't been in that situation where they're in the conversation for being the top person, and he's probably felt the pressure as he, you know, rose up the ranks in the rap world, and. Uh, to me, I look at it and I have respect for it because there are certain people that the way that they judge their success will literally be, are they the number one in people's eyes? It seems as if he's well-adjusted enough to judge his success by what he is creating and the people that fuck with it. Yeah, yeah. And he will feel less successful if he goes out of his box to do something for people's approval. I agree. I don't see the problem with it. I mean, honestly, man... I don't have a problem apologizing if I feel I'm wrong, especially if that shit is bothering my peace. I tell y'all all the time, the best way to not disturb your peace is to not disturb the peace of others. Not to mention, if Cole and Kendrick were actually friends like I believed them to be friends, if I'm Kendrick and I'm hearing this shit, in my mind, I'm like, oh, you fake as shit. Because think about how many times he probably done told Kendrick how much he loved these projects. Yeah, yeah. I, I love this, the Pimple Butterfly shit, yo. Oh, my God. I love, damn, yo. yo I, I love your last album. Thank you. You think that Cole wasn't saying that to Kendrick? So if you've been saying this shit to Kendrick and holding me in this high regard, and then I hear you tell me I fell off like The Simpsons and my catalog is whack, I'm like, yeah. yo, you fake his shit. So... 
for him to get out there and do what he did and apologize and say, man, I ain't mean none of that shit. I just got caught up listening to all these external, you know, outside voices. I get it. I'm not mad at it. Mm. In no way, shape, or form. I just wish you didn't put it out because it's almost like you get fouled hard in basketball and then you slap the guy and then you tell him, yo, yo, chill, 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 let's not fight. No, it's that's like, not what happened. It is, though. No, like, Kendrick fouled him hard. No, nah, Kendrick Cole shot the fucking came, block up. Cole came, <laughs> slapped him, no. and then he's like, yo, we no. shouldn't fight. We shouldn't do this. No, Kendrick, sh no. Kendrick shot the fucking block up looking for Drake. All right? Cole happened to be in the house. Cole got his pistol. Cole threw some shots back. And then realized, he said, let's not and, shoot and, and, no more. And then realized, <laughs> this shit don't feel right. I'm shooting at my partner. And I'm not about to die for this nigga from Canada because he ain't even out here on the front lines with me. That's the conversation people need to be having. Where is Aubrey Graham? Where is, <laughs> is true. Aubrey Graham? That is Trey done got out the car. When Trey got out the car, Doughboy went and handled his business. Aubrey Graham, it's time to stop riding around. Okay, Chubb's in the passenger seat. It's time to stop riding around and either get your motherfucking gun and go handle your business or everybody need to cool out. Because Kendrick has been bullying them for about several for about seven, eight years now. Bullying them. From the BET cipher when he threw shots at Drake, the King Kunta when he shoot shot, threw shots at Drake. This whole this last shit he did, that was all Drake. First person shooter is Drake's song. For all the dogs getting buried. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pet Cemetery, all of that shit like that. Drake, it's time to handle your handle. Now, if those two want to go at it on some friendly rap battle beef, cool. Because they've been circling the block around each other forever. Right? If they want to go have a friendly rap battle or a competitive rap battle that we know is not going to lead to anything, it's just going to be rap, they can go do that. I'm not mad at J. Cole deciding, I don't like it in my spirit. I don't want to do it. By the way, if Drake said that, I wouldn't care. If Drake said right now... I, I'm not doing that. It ain't also, no, who wants J. Cole to beef with Kendrick? Why it gotta be a beef, though? Nah, who wants him to battle with Kendrick? There's like, nothing yeah, there. No, if, no, if nobody wanted it that Exactly. Match. If you're a J. Cole what fan, the chances are... Nobody wanted that match. No. Yes, they did. No, we want no, Kendrick. We want Kendrick. Kendrick. Nobody, nobody wants Kendrick. Nobody wants Kendrick. If you're a yes, fan of... Yes, they did. No, did not. Yes, they did. Oh, they didn't. Stop, 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 stop. Nobody wants that. You weren't talking to the same people. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. If you're a fan of J. Cole, you're a fan of Kendrick. But it's always hold on Jay one second. Cole. Let me just let me just get it out. If you're a fan of J. Cole, you're a fan of Kendrick. There's not, I don't know if there's a single person on the globe right now that loves J. Cole and doesn't also love Kendrick. No, you're absolutely right. But I'm just saying they're both lyricists. So I feel like it's always been like who's the better one. At least no, that's not. the conversations that I, I've been having. You know why Kendrick and Drake are so perfect? Because it's like Jay-Z Nas. Mm-hmm. It exactly. literally is like Jay-Z Nas because you have two people who are actually really good MCs. Let's yes. not get it fucked up. No, 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 no. One of those nice. MCs has had some incredible commercial success. Commercial success that we've never seen. Never seen before. Kendrick has had a lot of good commercial success too, but he's more so still looked at as the purest. The artist. It's Michael That's Jackson and Prince. It's Michael Jackson and Prince. But it's see, like, in this case, and my, I'll tell you something. Prince would be Prince would be Kendrick to me. Yeah, that's what it is. Prince would Clean be Nas boy. to me. No, no, but the okay, 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 okay. No, no, I, I, yeah, you, like Michael you. Jackson has the commercial success. Got you, got you. But Prince is probably the more respected musician, even though he's got a lot of commercial success. A he's tons. still a respected artist. But people will go, yes. "Oh my God, this is the yes. artist," and yes. then Michael Jackson is the mainstream success, yes. and everybody loves the music, and his music is ubiquitous. You see it everywhere. That's right. Whereas Prince, they're like, "Okay, he's a little bit more artsy. He plays all of the instruments. He does these things." That's right. But having that competition where they're both going at it, oh, of course, there's a bloodlust for that. We actually want to see it. Who is better when it goes? down to it but j cole it's like buddy you don't need to be in this at all none yeah. no, no reason yeah. there's no reason and nobody, nobody respects you less for not being into it at all if you're not into it people still go j cole might be one of the best out there like every time you hear him rap you go this guy might be one of the best and nope. now he took himself out of the conversation no he did not yes he and, did well, i'm gonna say something dumb. but he was never he really did. in it yeah but and, now he's done he oh. if 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 y'all if y'all feel that way you never like j cole to begin with because nothing no. has changed. None of his albums have changed. That's what I'm None saying. None of his features have changed. No, no, no. Nothing I mean, about he J. can Cole never be changed. number one is what I'm saying. But he's, put it this way. He never had to, him at number one. Here's the thing. To his fans, this is why I'm saying he gains nothing. To his fans, he's already number he's one. Already number one. Of course. And, and he has devout, loyal, loving fans. So doing this battle is for the casuals. And it's just like, why do you need their approval so much? I think he's so self-reflective. 
Mm-hmm. And it's actually such a such a beautiful thing to see in an artist, someone who doesn't have like this deep down empty void that needs to get filled by every single person on the planet loving them. Someone who's grateful for what he has yeah. and, and can go, you know what? I don't need to fight for more from people who actually won't fight for me. I have the love of the people who love me. He won. I think y'all forgetting. No. What are we forgetting, Taylor? Because hip-hop's always you, been competitive. Yeah, what are you going to say? No, I said hip-hop's always been competitive. Exactly. It's always been, say, it's I'm better than you, so... and that's it. And? What that got to do with... Here's, here's the thing that people say that's so stupid to me. It's not stupid. Just... It's not stupid. You just lie, right? We'd be like, hip-hop is so competitive. Sure. How many of these artists have you seen go at each other? You can name them. But Kendrick also said it, though. Said what? He said in an interview that, you know, he's looking at hip-hop as a competitive sport. Like, he just wants to Yeah, but competitive don't mean you grab a microphone, I grab a microphone, and we go bar for bar. Competitive means I'm going to go in the studio, make the best possible material I can make, and let the people decide who's the illest. Like, I, we, 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 like, there's more I ways mean, to compete. Well, you, I mean, there's always make sense, been battles. You were name, all, name all the battles you've seen in your life. No, I'm just saying there's been battles in hip-hop as well. Name them. We have Jay Z, Nas. We have um, Drake and Meek Mill, and you Drake also Meek, that love, was very one sided. You love that continue. Drake did that though. You're uh, like, this is what yeah. it was about, blah blah blah. So then Meek, now, but, but but here's the thing: it was real. You know why it was real? Because Meek jumped out there and challenged Drake's pin. He said Drake don't so, write. And Kendrick's <laughs> been trying to challenge. Kendrick did not challenge Cole. Yes, he did. No, he did it. Yes, he did. He said, motherfuck, the big three is just big me. No, he also said, if you walk around with a stick, you're not going. You're still not Andre three K. He's coming That's at not, Cole. That wasn't that. about Cole. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't they, you, you the one showed me the video where they said they showed Drake talking about the sticks and all of that. And they, no, they were talking about Cole in that part. No. <laughs> no. No. Like, yes, like, he yes, he was. Was. Drake got yes, the he was. Drake got the shots in that. And Drake he has did, been getting and Drake, and Drake just... has been getting the shots for years. Exactly. There's not there was no reason for Cole to jump out the way that he did, other than to say some slick shit in the rap. I think some I slick, cool shit like I'm better than you type shit. He didn't have to jump out there the way he did. I can see why that didn't sit well with his spirit. Yeah, because he was lying. He didn't have. I agree. That when he when I get mad at way. you, I'm gonna say your image in trash. But that's a lie. Exactly. Exactly. And you would know I don't mean that. Exactly. You would know I'm only doing that to try but to hurt I'm your not, feelings. I'm not disagreeing with you about that though. I don't think that Jay Kosher went that route of doing that. He should have been like, has he? As he always boasts that he's the big guy and everything else like I that. I would have said he sound unhealed. I would have said Kendrick sounds like you ain't seen a therapist in a while. I would have went that route. Or unhealed, yeah. Let me say something. What Kendrick should, well, but not what he should do, but if I was Kendrick and how you said that he was, should feel the type of way that Cole said that shit, I would take Cole's apology and turn that into a whole a whole thing. Why? Like, put down the song. Why not? Why? Ke- J- Cole is not what Kendrick wants. Kendrick won. No one probably wants Kendrick. Kendrick wants Aubrey Drake Graham. Because Jake yeah. said, don't, you don't waste Kendrick, another bar on Cole. Yeah. No, nobody cared about the Cole diss to Kendrick. It didn't chip away a, Ch- a Kendrick legacy at all. If anything, it chips away a little bit at Cole, but I think it goes away. Wasting bars on Cole at this point, when you know where the real war is, is pointless. Drake yeah, is hiding like, behind the Cole smoke right now. I don't know he's hiding. He's all of this uproar. Yo, you stop, all of this uproar that y'all that making about true. Cole. Y'all should be putting that energy towards Drake. That's been Drake, this those. man been shooting at you for years, yeah. and he's a worthy opponent. You get you 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 ruined Meek Mill, right? right. Me, every time, right to this. I saw somebody call me Twitter fingers today. Wow. I saw what was the, the guy's name? Is one of his old homies called him Twitter fingers today? Okay, you can't do what you did to me. And then, like, he really, in a, in, a, in a way, and salute to Meek, he repositioned Meek forever. <laughs> Yo, that's what he did. That sounds crazy. No, you're right. Because Twitter finger shit. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and Meek can't help himself. <laughs> like, he really yeah. can't stop tweeting. Yeah. It's the strangest shit. If somebody called Get me. Get up, Rocky. Yes. If somebody, yeah. if somebody called me Twitter fingers, Get I would have limited my tweets a long time ago. Bruh. I would have limited him a long time ago. He can't help himself. So my point is, Meek charged him. Meek charged uh, Drake with the allegation of not writing. Drake responded with bars. Hey, that was a great battle. Drake won that fair and square. And they made a song after. Pusha T and Kanye tried to come at Drake. Drake came out with Duppy. I still think Pusha won. Yep. You know what I mean? Pusha but, did win. But we forget about it. 
We forget. That's, yes, it's it's, just, it's not one of those. It's not it's not a back to back because it never was. Who's better here? We know who's more successful. We ne- it, it was never even a conversation. It was just like, yeah. Drake Drake did something that is very rare. Air, and I think this is the other thing, and this is another conversation. This is what I think Drake is afraid of. I don't think Drake's afraid of Kendrick. I think Drake's afraid of himself. Meaning, when you do something like back to back. That's what people are expecting. Tupac never made another hit him up. God bless him, he passed. Mm. Nas never made another Issa. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 who, who, uh, Jay-Z never made another takeover. Like, it takes certain things to get something out of you. I don't know if Drake can get to that level of back-to-back again. Wow. I think he's competing with himself. Mm-hmm. And in his mind, he's like, if it's not back-to-back, I lose. I lose. And when he loses, he has, in my opinion, he has more to lose than Kendrick. He does. Kendrick has nothing to lose. Correct. Like, I don't think, and again, look at me. I'm the most casual. You guys are like locked in. You're super deep into it. So I'm actually the person who can be swayed. I'm the swing state voter. Everybody knows who y'all are going to vote for. I'm the swing state. I don't think Kendrick is anywhere near Drake in terms of the way their per- their success is perceived. It's not to say that he's not considered one of the greatest and people know who he is and they know his body of work, but when you're thinking of who's number one right now in the casual fan, I don't think, and I think it's like... You, you use the right terms because you said how their success is perceived. Perceived. It doesn't mean that they're not that great. And, the, and if you, you guys are obviously super big fans, right? So you know the work and you're like, wow, this person is, is so skilled. He's so incredible. And you see, you, the other part of that is you see all the fruits of Drake's labor. So you see the big house and you see the cars. Sure, and you, and you don't see it He, from Kendrick he looks like the super rap yeah, star. That's a great point. So, so you often forget how big yep. Kendrick Lamar really is. 100%. You forget Kendrick has won all of these Grammys. You forget yeah. You know, Kendrick got a Pulitzer Prize. You I'm forget, seeing Kendrick Kend- do prison push-ups on a, on a small lawn. That's what I'm saying. But he sold millions of records, sells so, out all so over successful. the world. He's a super, super. he's a rap superstar. Hopefully it doesn't come across like, no, I, I get what like you're I'm saying. aware. I'm just saying, saying. The, the casual, and the casual is who you swing in these types of things. You're not going to swing the super vans because like we know from Jay-Z, Nas, Whoever you in, you're in love with, you will justify to yourself That's that right. they won that battle. That's right. Like, so all the Jay-Z fans were like, nah, TakeOver was better. All the Nas fans were like, Ether's better. All the casuals went, Ether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So so the only person I think that can lose from this is Drake. Drake has the casuals around the world convinced that he is the number one. He is, in my opinion. Drake can knock him off. I'm sorry, Kendrick can knock him off by beating him in this battle, Drake, all he can really do by engaging in this, the only thing he can do is confirm what his fans and the population already feels. That's a lot to lose. Yep. Yeah. The win does nothing. The lose does everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pressure. And the win. And if, if Kendrick wins, everybody be like, oh, we knew we knew he would win. Well, the the Kendrick fans will say that. And even, the, I, even, even I think some casuals, because casuals still don't look at Drake as hip hop. You think? I, may, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't oh, think. Oh, they I, see more of the singing. They see yeah, the R and B. Yeah, he's just a big pop star like that. But that's mm. that's where Drake's advantage lies to me because, and that's what I, that's why I said you know in a lot of ways Drake is J, Drake is Jay because of the super success and they they've always been questioning you know Jay's hip hop not no more but back in then like all of those super hip hop guys would question whether Jay was really, really, really hip hop. Uh, uh. Like they've always looked at Nas as that. They've always looked at Kendrick as a hip hop purist. Mm. Drake's not a, a purist, but I think he is. I listen to rap. I can listen to Drake and tell he's a he's a purist. Yeah. So that's why it makes for such an interesting dynamic oh, between I mean, the it's two. Fascinating. It's a great it's a great battle. Them styles going make back. fights. They don't their styles are perfect for each other. Styles make fights. Their styles are perfect for each other. So do we get bars from Drake soon? We should have gotten him. No, I don't want. Here's the thing, Come Drake. Down, it's tough. I don't want Drake to give us no bars that he feels forced to give us. Mm. I only want Drake to give us a record if he feels it in his spirit. Same way Cole said he felt it in his spirit that he didn't want to. I only want Drake to do it if he feels it in his spirit. And Drake, you should only do it if you feel it in your spirit. But like, he's writing and everything else, like doing captions and everything else. That don't mean I want to write a diss record. But I don't understand why he wouldn't, though. Because 
Again, people probably thought Meek Mill was reasons, probably going to win. All the reasons exactly Andrew what Andrew just, just said. said. First of all, Drake, let's be clear, let's be for real. Drake don't got nothing to prove. Thank let's, you. let's also be for real. Thank Kendrick don't got nothing to prove. Yeah. Neither one of them got anything to prove. They doing this just because they got they want to do it for the sport. Yeah. Like Kendrick is like and Kendrick been trying to eat him forever. Paul. Yeah. Like like literally, Kendrick has been throwing shots. Now let's take out something personal that I don't know about. I don't know. But Kendrick has been throwing shots at Drake for a while. Remember, yeah. there was even a leak track that came out yeah. that people were saying was AI, and he was getting that Big Sean, Drake, and all of them. Yeah. So it's just like, yo, Drake, you know what he wants. I don't know. I don't know why he wants it. You might. He's the top. Like he, like how y'all said, Drake is probably like that's the top. So you know, there Kendrick wants to challenge. Now, now Drake, just want, Drake just want the competition. I mean, Kendrick might just want the competition. You know. So why is Drake scared of that though? Kendrick might feel like he needs that. Like. Ooh, this like I, I just thought about this. You know, Jay Jay and Nas went at it, right? So regardless of who you think won the battle, they both went for it. A lot of people get at the Nas because of Ether. I still think Takeover was better, but Nas got a body. Fifty Cent caught a body with yep. Ja Rule. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Kendrick watched Drake get a body with Meek. Like maybe Kendrick won one. Maybe Kendrick won. Maybe Kendrick won one. Also, like you, like you said, the love uh, Drake has for hip hop, whatever. I would think he would be like, all right, let's go. Yeah, but he already he already tasted that 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 he already burned. He he know what it tastes. He know what the blood tastes like. No, yeah. he already caught a body. Did you see that video? Of that crazy ass white kid who had killed somebody and decapitated him, and the cop was like. <sighs> You I know, saw the video. something strange I, I in your closet. It. Yeah, I had to turn that. And it was a head, and they asked him why, and he just was like, I just wanted to see what it felt like to kill somebody. <sighs> Whoa. Y'all are crazy, man. In rap, you might feel like that. In comedy, you never looked at a roast. Like, sometimes you don't ever look at, like, Jamie Foxx roast when he was roasting the uh, the brother Doug, the other comedian. Uh, yeah. I was watching Lavelle Crawford and, um, and uh, uh, what's the brother's name that played Brown on um, David, uh, David Band? I think his name David Mann. David Mann and Lavelle Crawford was going at it. And they was going at it. Like, you don't ever look at a roast and be like, y'all want some of that action? I mean, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? You don't yeah. ever look like... But no one's ever... Kendrick to be the, like, big three. No one's ever challenged Kendrick. Nobody Why? ever challenged Cole either. Yeah. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. no, I think, but, act, but Cole like never came at nobody. Like, the only person I can think of is Wale at this point. But, like, he didn't even come at Wale, really. He was... That's how Cole should have approached it. That should have been his tone. If he was going to come at Kendrick, his tone should have been like how he did on that record where he was going at Kanye yeah. and Wale. Or how he did the joint where he was going at Lil Pump. Like, that should have been his tone. Yeah. More condescension. More con yes. But he can't condescend to Kendrick yeah. because he admires him too much. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so he was reflexive and he just didn't think it through. All right, let's pay some bills, y'all. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. Now, get this. Through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. There's no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Guys, claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research and Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Uh, must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to the U.S. customers in good standing now. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. Charlemagne, this is also brought to you by... Policy Genius. Salute to Policy Genius, man. Uh, Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $2.92 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. All right? Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. Talk to a team of award winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. 
Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. Thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash idiots or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash idiots. Let's get back to the show. Hezzy! Yes, sir! You got any church announcements? Yes. Um... Yo, uh, what's it called? This weekend, we are coming to Jacksonville, Charlotte. We added a second show in Atlanta. We'll see you guys all there. Uh, and then next weekend, we'll see you in Nashville, Austin, and then Phoenix. We added a second show there as well, theandrewschultz.com. Also, Houston and Dallas. Thank you guys so much. That was, the weekend was fucking incredible, man. I uh, really appreciate you guys. And uh, I will see you guys all very, very soon. The Life Tour. Peace. Yes, uh, you know what I'm here for. My Black Country, a journey through country music's black past, present, and future by the good sister Alice Randall, professor at Vanderbilt, man. Um, pick this up. Everybody out there having conversations about, you know, Beyonce and, you know, black people's place in country music. Alice Randall, she's got it all in here. And I, I truly believe in divine alignment, man. When I first heard about this project and, um, you know, you know, it was out there on the market and people were placing bids. I just knew I wanted to do this project just because um, these are the kind of stories I like. These are like those hidden figure stories when people are learning new information, learning new history about not just, you know, black people, but America in general. And, it, you know, when you know that you got something like this coming out because this guy came out in bookstores this week, but then you see what Beyonce did with Cowboy Carter and it's just like all of those stars start to align and you're like, damn, now there's a conversation around black country music? Mm -hmm. So My Black Country by Alice Randall is in bookstores right now. Go get that. I'm thinking about looking for a professor that wants to do My White Country um, <laughs> in regards to white people's place in hip-hop since Taylor Swift is coming out with a hip-hop album. Hip album. That would only make sense, right? But I want it to be organic, though. I, wanted to, I only want to do it if it's in my spirit. Well, is it in your spirit? It is in my spirit. If I can find somebody who wants to talk about white people's place in hip-hop and have it coincide, it probably won't be out in time, though, because Taylor Swift's album is coming out like in the next month or so. That shit is going to kill. Huh? Ugh, Taylor Swift rap album. It's, you know why it's going to kill? Why? Because it's going to make a bunch of people angry, mm. and it's going to make a bunch of people love it, mm. and it's going to make some people who are on the fence about it, just to, the just to, just to people that can be swung either way, they're going to be like, I don't know, yo, this shit kind of slap. This shit goes crazy. And all you're doing is creating a tsunami Oof. and the algorithm don't know the difference. No, it I don't. Say, I don't ever want y'all to stop complaining about anything that I say. Yeah, yeah. I don't want y'all to ever stop complaining about anything that I do. Yeah. The algorithm does not know the, the difference. difference. So go. <sighs> yeah, shoot. Yeah. And I also want to tell y'all, uh, the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival is happening Saturday, April 27th. In uh, Atlanta, Georgia, it is April 9th. Well, as we're recording this on April 9th, so we got a few more weeks. Uh, VIP tickets are sold out. Still some general admission left, okay, but they going fast. We're on pace to sell out. Wallow and Gilly are going to be on that stage. Mandy and Wheezy, Horrible Decisions are going to be on that stage. Jess Hilarious is going to be on that stage doing Carefully Reckless. Uh, she's going to be doing Just Fix My Mess live on the stage. The Poor Minds podcast with a special guest. I can't announce it this week, but I'll be able to announce it next week. But Dre and Lex are going to have a special guest with them on that stage. The Baller Alert show is going to be on that stage. Uh, Will Lucas with Deeply Well. That's a financial literary... No, I'm lying. Will Lucas with Black Tech Green Money. That's a financial literacy podcast. And Debbie Brown with Deeply Well. That's a mental health and mindfulness podcast. She'll be on that stage. We got uh, two panels, too. John Hope Bryan is on the panel. Uh, Damon John, him and Damon John are actually on the same panel. Uh, Shauna Ayers is on that panel. Carrie Champion's on another panel. So we'll see you, man, in ATL April 27th. You know, it's a festival, so we got the food and the merchandise and all of that good stuff. We'll see you Saturday, April 27th in Atlanta. Go get your tickets right now at eventbrite.com or blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. Taylor, what else we got? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I spoke about? Did we, we talked about Gerard Carmichael, right? Did you see what Gerard said about Dave Chappelle? No, what did he say? He basically was um, saying that, when he said this before, but he was like, you know, Dave Chappelle, his legacy is basically now when you Google him, it's just all trans stuff and, you know, 
Basically, he should do better. You shouldn't offend people, yada, 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 all that stuff like that. Lo and behold, he's been trending the past 48 hours because he offended somebody. No. <laughs> with a joke that's on his HBO reality show. And see, this is why I say comedians, if you're a comedian and you want to say somebody's not funny, cool. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. But if you're a comedian and you try to use the I'm offended angle, it's always tricky. It will always come back to you. Always Listen to be Gerard so Carmichael. Offended, yeah. Sometimes joke to him that like our relationship is like that of like a slave and the master son who like teaches me how to reef by candle. Like yeah, he groans too because he's a good person. He doesn't like that fucking joke. I like that joke. That's my version. I think that shit's hilarious. Yes, sir. Marie Antoinette. Sir. I don't know what that is. You know. That's, uh, it's a joke. That's... Yeah, I love Gerard, but that's so goddamn corny. Not even just because of the content of the joke. The joke itself is terrible. But my point is, he's getting backlash for this because it offended people. Mm. That's why comedians should never step out there and say anything about a comedian offending people. Mm. Because you're going to want that grace too. Yeah, I mean, everybody's going to be offended by something. It's just a weird position for comedians to take. I, yeah, this also this idea of, like, legacy being important is quite uh, peculiar to me. Well, I would say to Gerard, when I said this on Breakfast Club earlier today, I would say to Gerard, I think you got to kind of focus on your own legacy. But, yeah, but, like... Dave Chappelle's legacy is solidified. But who cares about legacy? It's just, like, such a peculiar thing to care about. The... It happens. It's gonna happen regardless, Shops. No, your legacy happens regardless, and then yeah. people will forget about you regardless. Like That's the true. second you yeah. stop, like yeah. there are people that were the greatest comedians of all time that are barely even mentioned now. And then yeah. when they were alive, they were the biggest in the world. And that's the same thing with basketball. It's the same thing with hockey. It's the same thing with radio. It's the same thing with everything. I think because it's not as many outlets. It wasn't as any, many outlets back then to record what they did. No, sure, sure, sure. But what I'm more saying is like the level of narcissism that is required to worry about what the people will think about you after you're dead and for generations beyond that yeah, 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 yeah. is so astronomical. I can't even conceive of it. What's like I could give a legacy? fuck what people think about me after I'm dead. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's just, as long as I'm creating, I care because I'm creating it for their consumption. And I would love if they really love it. That means a lot to me. It makes what me if, feel good. What, but what if you die and it's a guy out there that's like, yo, he used to suck my cock every day. I'm dead. Day. I'm dead, I don't care. <laughs> you don't care. I'm dead, I don't care. What if God said, your spirit can come back real quick and handle something if you want to? This guy's out here telling you, telling everybody that Andrew used well, to if I'm, suck well, If he says that to he... me, then I'm aware of it. It would really suck to not be able to do anything about it. That sucks. <laughs> not being able to do anything about it, very frustrating. But if you can do something about it, you're good. Legacy, the long-lasting impact. Well, there's two definitions. An amount of money or property left to someone in a will are the long-lasting impact of particular events, actions, et cetera, that took place in the past are of a person's life. See, I don't have a problem with that, Schultz, because <sighs> I just don't I want to be... I, I, you should hope... I, I think people are going to be laughing at you 30 years from now. You know what? Even they, if they're just looking listen, at your old shit. If they do, that's awesome. What a fucking blessing. That's amazing. If they don't, that's amazing too, because I'm creating the shit that I want to create right now. If you're only concerned about legacy then you're not making the things that you truly want to create. Saying, no, you're right. And if, you're, if, if that is your only concern, you're not creating authentically. If you're not creating authentically, right. then, you're less in, then your legacy is trash anyway. If you're thinking about it is the problem. Because you're thinking about what yeah, the yeah, people yeah, yeah, want yeah, yeah. instead of what you yeah, want to make. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and to that point, um, yeah, I think Gerard does that. I think Gerard Maybe. cares I too much. I, I, again, I don't know enough about him to tell, but... No, I think he, I think he cares too much, and I think that... Um, but worrying about I think legacy he cares too much and tries trash. too hard. Interesting. Yeah. Why do you cut? Why do you feel that way? Because I think he tries to make people uncomfortable. Hmm. Like I don't think you try to make people uncomfortable. Andrew Schultz is a fucking maniac <laughs> who tries to find the best joke at all times, yep. and you might be trying to make people look at things. Just, just objectively look at things a different way. But ultimately, I want you to laugh, and I want you, you want to, to laugh. feel in on it. And I want right. us all to have a great That's time. That's right. Yeah. So, so, but the, but the, 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 
the controversy that comes with that, the 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 offending that comes with that, it's all organic. Yeah. And more importantly, it's funny. Yeah. If your sole purpose to what you're saying, even just about legacy, if you're trying to make people uncomfortable, it's going to always be cringe. Mm. Always. But listen, if that's what you authentically want to do, then that's great and I respect that. And yeah. you get to live in that peace. It almost goes to like what we were saying about uh, Cole. It's it's like, cool. Live in that. Live in that truth. That's great. But the idea to worry about what people think about you after you're dead... I, I I just I can't fathom that level of self importance. Like, hey, can you imagine, Charlemagne, what people are gonna think about you when you're dead? I, Why would you give a fuck? I don't care now. Yeah. Am I dead? No. <laughs> you're here. <laughs> I don't be giving a fuck now. No. I refuse to give a fuck. It's care whack. for what your kids might consume. Yeah. My kids should know me. If there's, exactly. If there's, like remember, if, remember, they're, remember, if your kids are swayed by a YouTube video, your right. kids are swayed by a tweet. Like, that's right. You failed. That's right. I did that. That is the that is the legacy. Yeah. Your kid. You, there is nobody who should know you better than your kids and your wife. Exactly. The people who actually love you, had conversations with you, speak to you all the time. They know who you are. They know what you're about. The people that usually uh, talk about your legacy didn't even fucking know you. They got their own personal legacy for them. You know? You know what legacy really means? Leg A C Y. What's going on? <laughs> Leg A C Y. And what does that mean? Nothing. I just threw that out there. And you thought I was gonna dunk I, that. I thought you had something for it. <laughs> that might have been the worst alley oop in the history of alley oops. That was one of those alley oops where you throw it up and I don't even jump. I just look at that shit go into the stands like, was that for me? Did you throw that up there for me to dunk? I could have flipped it if I wanted to. Oh, I'd be like, leg, leg, I see why. Nope. Leg, I see why. Nope. Save him, Taylor. Leg. <laughs> Taylor, save him. Leg. Yeah. I see why. It's not I. It's not I. It's A C Y. I see why. <laughs> save him. Save him. Save him. I. Save him. Say, leg a C. Taylor, you love interrupting okay, for right, a new right. topic. No. Leg, <laughs> leg the time. A C. But you, you want him to suffer. Is ooh, that ooh, what you want? Yeah. 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 No, leg yeah. A C. L. If you tear the A C, yeah, yeah. you hurt your leg. So don't think about your leg. So I did. AC. I did say something before about not caring about your legacy, but right now yeah. you are destroying yours. <laughs> you are not destroying your legacy, but you're destroying whatever you have right now. Yeah. We need to immediately cut that out of the podcast. To you're right, him. yo. I want to apologize for what I just said. It wasn't in my spirit to do. You know what I'm saying? That shit did not sit right with me. I'm, I don't want to be able to sleep the next couple of days. Please forgive me for the legacy thing, um, Meek Mill. Come on, let's talk about it. Wait, 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 let me play it first. Which one is this? I'll leave Meek alone. I just wanted to, I, 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 this, this is a learning lesson. I don't care about the rest of this shit. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about life, man. There are certain people who just need curb your enthusiasm style shows. Nick just turn the goddamn camera on and follow them around and let's be entertained. Meek is one of the fans. Let me hear that. This is Meek. This is Meek at WrestleMania. And The Rock is unconscious, right? Get up, you got and Meek is. Get up! <laughs> Rock out. Get up, rock yourself into it. Man, Get shout up. out to Meek. Yo, how did, how did Rock male. not break character, though? How, <laughs> how did he not chuckle while he's fake knocked out? Meek said, hold on, Meek said, if you ain't come up watching Minutes of Society, you're not going to catch this. You're in the wrong culture talking. What? I grew up on Minutes of Society. I don't get the reference. What is it? Get up! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what, I don't, I, I've watched Minister Society a million times. What is he talking about? I don't know. Get up. <laughs> Maybe he has a confused with Boys in the Hood or something. Oh, I don't remember what what, what no. scene of minutes was he? Get, the guy said, "Get up." Well, maybe it was Boys in the Hood after his brother gets shot. Yeah, he's he's what? holding him, saying, "Get up." I don't remember that, bro. <laughs> From that scene, I remember Ricky. And I mean, they did try to get Ricky up. And Minister of Society, who fell down? The crackhead got shot and killed. Kane beat up that dude in front of the house. Is it when Kane got shot? I don't remember. I don't, Meek, 
I don't watch Minutes Society a million times. I don't remember nobody sounding like this. Play it one more time. Good. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Nick need to get off his phone. Man, Nick got to get the fuck <laughs> off the phone, man. No. Oh, my God, yo. He wants to get There's back. another one? No. Oh, come on, He's stop. not good at tweeting. This is fucked up. Meek Mill says the rumors about him and Diddy is confusing his 12-year-old son. He's 12 with people saying his dad gay. It's sick now out here. His tweet, I don't believe... Oh, somebody tweeted about, damn, Wale is a full-grown man. Didn't Puffy dangle him from the balcony? Meek says, I don't believe no Diddy story. Once they lied about me now, anybody try to sexually assault me? (laughs) (laughs) There's no way. There's no. There's no way in hell he actually. Also, you gotta you gotta read it how he talks, and then it makes sense. Read it, Taylor. You from Philly? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) What? I don't believe it. Did he once they lied about me now? Hey man, John Sexton saw me. It'll be a bang out on the spot. Hey yo, <laughs> and I don't Listen. know that hell, hell. I don't care, but y'all confuse me. I say it's real. <laughs> when people say it's that gay, say now it's real for you. <laughs> Listen, the worst thing hurting me right now <laughs> is, is punctuation. <laughs> Bro, anybody try to sexually assault me, it will be a bang out on the spot. <laughs> 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 he did this before too. Like, wow. That's what I'm saying. Punctuation. Yo, you know when you tweet something that gives you like 60 seconds to make sure? Mick don't give a fuck. Mick be letting them shit fly. He really does. Anybody try to sexually assault me, it will be a bang out on the spot. Period. I think that's what the person is going for, me. Yep, he want that. Jesus Christ. How y'all don't know that, LOL, I don't care, but y'all confused with my son, he's 12, with people saying his dad gay, it's sick now out here. I mean, that's true, man, you know, because his son is 12 years old. 12 was like, what, eighth grade? Yeah. Seventh, eighth grade? Like, these, Oh, that makes me ill. These sad. people are letting these jokes fly. It's true, though. He's not the first person to even tell me that who's in the public eye. I've had a... Uh, I've had other people who are in the public eye tell me the same thing. Like, yo, my son got to hear this shit or my daughter got to hear this shit. So I understand. That's a real emotion. I'm not I'm not mad at me for, you know, saying that. All I'm saying is that tweet didn't help. That's all I'm saying. Do you think he's trolling? No, nah, I don't think me troll. I think Meek is pissed the fuck off. I think Because if he was trolling, this would, this would be so good. Like, it would make nah, sense. Nah, he's not trolling. Meek pissed off, man. Nah, I mean, he's tight. He's, he's, he's tight. pissed off. He's know? tight. Motherfuckers is out here saying he gay. Like, how can you not be tight? And then how can you... Yeah, and now everything you do fits under that umbrella. That's the tricky thing for him. And it's weird, right? Because, you, you know, and I, I've said this before, but I see a lot of people who be acting like they so pro-LGBT and then... Q, and but then, they're quick to weaponize sexuality against straight men. Mm. You don't think that's weird? Talk to me. It's just like, if you're pro-LGBTQ, why would you want to... Call me gay. Out somebody. I'm not talking about Meek. I'm just saying, oh. why would you want to out somebody or call somebody gay? Why is it a weapon when you want it to be? It's a great point you're I don't, making. I don't you're get making it. Too many, you're making too much sense right now. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're about to get a hit piece from Let the Let me Dems. shut the fuck up. Them Jesus liberals going to give a hit piece to you right now. <laughs> shut the fuck up. What 100%. else we got, Taylor? What else we got, Taylor gang? Taylor, come on. Taylor give got her little shit. shit. All memes necessary. We covered Cole. We covered... My, what is this Tori spelling? Tori spelling Tori spelling can't pee by herself? Oh, come on with all this. I remember watching 902 and no thinking that was a, such a beautiful human. I mean, she's still beautiful. You were into Tori? That was your that was your shorty from the show? Yeah, Tori was Tori was beautiful. I liked uh Fox had him, bro. I like Brenda. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was Shannon Doherty, right? Shannon Doherty, but I liked uh when Tiffany Amber Thiessen hit the show. I don't even remember that. That was a later year. So she was the girl from um what was that show when they were in high school? Saved by the, Saved by the Bell. Which one did she play? Brunette the- from Saved by the Bell then came on to 9 looking crazy. Wait, Kelly? Kelly? Kelly. Slater's girl. K- Kelly Kapowski. Hey, oh. Okay. I that wasn't Slater's girl. That was Zach's shorty. Oh, the other one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. No, I do remember that. Jessica Spano was Slater's yeah, girl. Yeah, I do remember that. Um, Tori Spelling lifts lid on toilet habits. Can't poop alone. Sun watches. Let's hear it, please. What's going on with, with this? Yourself. Why is this news? Be happy with yourself. Uh, I don't want to be with myself. <laughs> I I don't know. 
and people are like, wait, that says a lot. You should be happy with yourself alone. I haven't been alone. Like, I like right. honestly, like stop I still it. don't poop alone. Like, this, we're we're hitting an all time there and We don't need to talk about Tori Spelling shit habits. Okay, there's other well, things we can talk about. I, I don't. I will say this. The reason this is interesting to me is because the, the reason I think this shouldn't be a story. Mm. Women never go to the bathroom alone. They always poop with each other. That's, with each that's other. what great I'm points. saying. That's, that's, yes, it's a great point. I, it's, it's a fact. Yeah. I got I got four daughters. My three daughters that are all two years two years apart, three years apart, eight, five, and two. They're doing that now. Mm -hmm. They go to the bathroom with each other. Like they, it's a thing. Women love going to the bathroom with each other. Yeah, that's true. but at the same time, what? What? At the same I time, feel like what? as I got older, it's not like that's that. not true. I'm serious. I've seen so many duck lip selfies coming from bathrooms with you and all your <laughs> homegirls. Well, that's like true. the last post I've made, like the bathroom was beautiful. Am I, I'm yeah, mad but that's my it. point. Y'all all y'all love a bathroom. Y'all know what a bathroom, bathroom looks like. like? Uh, yes, that's what y'all do. You take pictures. You hang out. I was at an event. It, if I'm at a restaurant, it's not like lies. That, I'm that serious. is such a lie. That's such a lie. <laughs> you and one of your homegirls is going to the bathroom. I don't know why y'all not at a restaurant. That's not true. You're lying. You're telling a lie for no reason. J Cole, listen to me. You're lying for no reason. God. Right now, you don't have to do this, okay? okay? What else we got? Um, Come on, Taylor. Tiffany gang. Hash wants to what? Come on, Taylor gang. Tiffany Hash wants to sell her drawers. Nah, Russell uh, Simmons bonds. Yeah, what did Russell say? Chris, this is your niece. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Chris Morrow's niece, <laughs> Yoki Simmons. Okay, Russell Simmons. <laughs> what does that say? Russell Simmons sends daughter what? What are you looking at? I'm looking at Hollywood Unlocked. Scroll back go to the first, first slide. Russell Simmons sends his daughter Aoki positive message after internet criticizes her for kissing 65-year-old restaurateur Victoria Ossoff. Okay, all the dad girls in here. Girl dads. Girl dads. Dad girls. Say? Dad girls. <laughs> <laughs> now we're trans. Now we're trans. <laughs> All right, we got oh, girl dads in here. All right, so let, let's say let's say your daughter that was educated at Harvard, graduated at 20 years old, uh, decided to use that brilliant brain and intellect uh, to uh, marry, not marry, to date a guy 43 years or 47 years her senior. Uh, what would you say? Chris? Wouldn't be my first choice, but... I really? Think one of the things you got to learn is what do you mean? It's out of your control. You got to let these kids live. Now, you know, obviously a relationship like that feels transactional, right? So the, why is this girl that graduated from the finest uh, educational institution in the world having a transactional relationship with a man? I don't know. I mean, what a waste of an education, you would say. Well, <laughs> you're not going to Harvard so that you can marry a millionaire and. Well, I, know, the beach I, Saint you know, I don't think they probably were talking about getting married, I would hope. Even worse, I would prefer that it was true love. No, you wouldn't you. want them to get married. You want that? Oh, I would rather that than just being like, pay. you're basically being paid to come out for the weekend to St. Bart's. What if he's a gerontosexual? What does that well, mean? I don't know. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. A person who's attracted to elderly people. May I see that? Yes. She's a, yeah, gerontophilia. Gerontophiliac. What if she's a gerontophiliac? She's probably a gerontophiliac. So she, oh, sorry. What if? I mean, there's a clip going around about her saying she wants a sugar daddy. What, what, what's going on at Harvard? <laughs> what's happening at Harvard? <laughs> Has, what, what's going on here? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, but seriously, we don't take that into consideration. What if she is? She has an affliction. Yeah, what if she's, she's a gerontophiliac? She's a gerontophiliac. We're so quick to be like, oh, that guy's a pedophile. What if, this, what if she's a gerontophiliac? No, I don't, think, I don't think that he's a pedophile. No, nah, he's not. She's, I mean, she's he's the man. I mean, listen. How, how, a twenty-one-year-old? You're sixty-three. You're getting a twenty-year-old. I, mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, and that ain't yeah. He's the, a man. I think it's ridiculous to be forty-something <laughs> years old and older. You could have been, no, but listen, you could have sixty-three. But think about it. When you were forty-something, I am forty. When you were when 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 he was forty something, she was dead. She was growing in the womb. Oh yeah, she wasn't even alive. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like I, right, that's that's wild to me. On both sides. I think it's wild for the guy to want to do that. I think it's wild for the woman to want to do that. But... Nah, it's not wild for the dude. Eh, the dude is the man. You don't want nothing 40? The dude is... She's 21 years old. She's an adult. 
Let's stop acting like she's f- like. It's actually yeah, you're right. It's she's actually, 21 it's, it's, years it's old. Actually, she's ancient. I'm I'm questioning her more than him. Of course, what yeah, she's yeah, doing yeah, is yeah, crazy. Yeah. But what he's doing is he's the man. Yeah, I'm questioning her more than him. A 63 year old is out there banging a an, a 21 year old. I get it. I'm questioning her more than him. His group chat is going nuts. Hers is like, oh my god, I can't believe people but saw it, pictures. She she's has a father that's that age. That's why I think it's weird. Like, well, history repeating itself. Like, yeah. her father is much older than... I mean, of course, but it's just... I mean, that's Not that much older, was he? I mean, I think... Was your brother that much older, Chris? Who? <laughs> was your yeah. brother that much older than what? his wife? Your brother, Russell. <laughs> What? <laughs> That's a brother, bro. That's his brother. He's his brother's keeper, yo. He don't know nothing. <laughs> this guy don't tell for nothing. That's loyalty. Oh, my right God. There. Let's pay some bills, Taylor. Come back and do some asking idiots, Wait, man. Bro, what did he say? What? Didn't, wasn't the post Oh, yeah, what did Russell say? Though? Damn, you're right. What Shit, can fuck. he say? What can he say? <laughs> I mean. I think he said the same thing we just said, what Chris just said. He said, shout out, dude. He said, throwback. No, that's something about something else. I mean, he just tried to say something to make light of the situation, I guess. I don't know, man. Hey, God bless. I'm, I try to mind my business. That ain't, you know, that ain't my problem. And I hope it's a problem I don't have. I oh hope my I don't God. sit around and talk to my 21-year-old Prayers. about dating a 65-year-old. Prayers. Like, come on, man. Prayers. Yeah. What if it is? Nah, nah. I'm going to St. Bart's nah, with a gun. I <laughs> I mean, what if it I'm is? I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't I'm going with a gun. Oh, you do it. Oh, you... Come I mean, what if it is? I mean, I'm with, I, I don't. I, what if it is? I, that's a great way to say that. I, I, I don't know what I would do when I cross that bridge. We Come all on, say son. what we would do. Come on, son. When so certain hypothetical, shit what would you do if right now? How do you feel? What would you do? I'd probably be trying to question what I did wrong, or did I do anything wrong? You know what I mean? Did her mom do anything wrong? Is that her thing? Can I go get her tested for gerontophilia? Like, I need to know what the fuck... <laughs> you know what I'm serious? I need to know what the fuck is happening here. You know what I mean? I want to sit down and have a conversation. I think that anytime you're confused about anybody in your life... I'm learning that with my 15-year-old. I know that what's happening to us over the... I mean, we've always had communication, but the conversations are just different now because she's 15, She's becoming an adult. So the conversations are different. The conversations are turning to about college and what she wants to do with her future. Does she have a boyfriend? That might be too personal. Nah, not that no. I know of. Yeah, I better not know about it. But <laughs> oh, you know, now, now. <laughs> see, now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I have a conversation with my daughter. She's dating a guy I'm, 60 years old. <laughs> I'm a still, Does she have a boyfriend now? I'm going to still have a conversation. He'd be a dead man if I knew he had a boyfriend. <laughs> I didn't say all that, but I'm, it's, it's still a conversation. But it's just like. <laughs> this guy, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Like, we got to stop acting like we know what we do in these situations. I don't I've, know. I've just been told, and then maybe, Chris, you can speak on this a little bit more. And again, I don't know, but I'm obviously curious for my own personal reasons. That once girls reach the age where they begin to be um, sexual, it can often create a, a little bit of a, a fracturing in the relationship with a father because they feel like now they have to withhold something from them. Whereas before, they could share everything because their life was more innocent. And now once they become this sexual being, they don't feel like they can share those experiences with the dad. A lot of times dads are in position, seems maybe you're in a little bit more, which is like you don't really want to know that they're a sexual being. And now all of a sudden there's this division between daughter and father. I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. My I'm spirit, just saying that's that's what I've heard. My spirit don't agree with this conversation. What? I don't want. I'm not even joking. <laughs> no, this is a, this <laughs> a good combo. No, no, ha- Look, both my daughters have boyfriends. I don't know the first thing about the physical aspect of it. I don't think they want to have that combo, but we talk about everything else. But you, I mean, you're not wow. dumb either, though. So you got to. I it's mean, this, this is my sense. perspective. You just have to keep communication open, no matter what the I topic that. is. You just have and. There are a lot of moments where, yeah, it's uncomfortable. I don't think any father is particularly thrilled about talking about boyfriends with their daughters. But, like, the worst thing that can happen is the kids try to hide stuff from you. Right. And that's what I don't want. I don't you want... You can't. You got to right. eat it. You just, my point with that is you want to keep the lines of communication open. I want my kids to feel like they can talk to me about any and everything. Because we didn't. I didn't do that growing up. Right. I don't want them to feel like they got to hide nothing from me because... This, especially in this era, it's too much wild shit to navigate by yourself. Mm. Like, please, don't, I'm your best friend. Your mom's your best friend. And we're your parents. We love you. Nobody going to have your back like we do. I promise you, the only thing that's going to ever piss me off, I tell my daughter this all the time, the only thing that's going to ever piss me off is the lies. Don't lie to me. We will figure any and everything out. 
Right. Please. But Drew just asked you if your daughter had a boyfriend and you said she better not. So that's what my reaction was. Like, <laughs> why you that way. I was, why can't we all have complicated emotions? That's the other thing the internet has done. The internet has created these motherfucking extremes to make us think you got to be this or you got to be that. This shit is complicated. Yeah, it is. What happened to that fucking status on Facebook? Does that still exist? <laughs> this shit is complicated. It's not one emotion. It's Facts. really not. Facts, None though. of this shit is one emotion. Now nah, you're right. Like all of this shit. Consi- <laughs> It, it, all of this shit, you have to have some nuance to it. Mm. You got to be objective to it. You don't know what you're going to feel when the shit actually happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same thing going back to J. Cole. J. Cole probably really thought in his mind, somebody wants some smoke with me, I'm going to bring it to him. Yeah. You didn't factor in waiting for somebody you actually like. Uh-huh. Somebody that you actually consider a friend. You didn't think that was going to be the person that laid the gauntlet down, did you? Yeah. Now, now what? You didn't react the way you thought you was going to react. Yeah. Oh, you thought you had the stomach for it but you might not you didn't and it's okay i am perfectly fine with saying i don't know i'm perfectly fine with changing my mind i'm perfectly ap- fine with apologizing when i'm wrong and i'm perfectly fine with going through all my emotions my therapist says feel your feels mm. all therapists tell you that that you got to go through all those emotions stop trying to suppress them just go fucking through them Oh, shit. Shout out to the South Carolina Gamecocks, baby. Yes, sir. South Carolina Gamecocks completed an undefeated season. They beat Iowa 85-75 to win the national championship and complete a perfect season. Salute to the good sister, Don Staley. Don Staley, man. Let me tell y'all something. This is the third time the Gamecocks are national champions, okay? Don Staley actually should have six at the least five championships right now. What is that? They won uh, Asia Wilson's junior year. I believe that was 2017. Okay. Came back the next year. They lost Asia Wilson's senior year. Okay. They probably should have won it that year. But, you know, I'm not... They lost, they lost. So, I, you know, I, I, whatever. But the one that they absolutely should have is the COVID year. They were undefeated, uh, running through uh, every fucking body, blowing everybody the fuck out, yeah. and the fucking season got canceled. That was Aaliyah Boston's sophomore year, I believe. Then they came back the next year mm. and won it for Aaliyah Boston's junior year. Then they lost Aaliyah Boston's senior year to Iowa. I think they lost by four points. Once again... I think the referees had a lot to do with that, but they lost. Hmm. So it is what it is. So at the least, you know, I'm not even going to say for at the least, Don should have four, but she truly should have six because the COVID year, they absolutely was going with it. And last year, they shouldn't have lost to Iowa, but they did. So whatever. She's, but, yeah, go, go, go. Sorry. They've only lost three games. She's incredibly impressive. My God. Like just hearing her talk, like she's, the way she handles herself in these interviews and like, I don't know, I just, I was like, she could coach in the league. She could coach in the league. I don't want her to. No, no, I'm not saying she should, but like, I just her demeanor, the way that she approaches the game, the way that she approaches the media, the way that she approaches even like talking about the practice squad. She has those yeah. dudes that hoop with them, and she's like, "Yeah, they get rings too." Like, she's just so poised, under control. The way that she handled Caitlin, Caitlin Clark, and the way that she gave kind of her praise and like. Smoke gave her moment. Like, by the way, there was no reason not to do that. No, like, yeah, she, it was weird to me to see people trying to downplay what she was like, doing. Yo, Caitlin yeah. Clark is now. now let's, let, let, this is just my personal opinion. Yeah, I feel like the rise of women's basketball, especially on the college level, and hopefully it translates to the pros mm. that we've seen over the last several years. I think the catalyst for that is Don Staley. I think Don Staley leaving Temple University. And coming to the University of South Carolina absolutely created that. The reason I say that is because Don Staley came. She changed the program. She kept the legendary, iconic Asia Wilson in South Carolina. And, you know, South Carolina is a place where a lot of those greats go off to play other places. Zion didn't go to the University of South Carolina. Ja didn't go to the University of South Carolina. Mm. Asia Wilson was the number one women's college player coming out of high school, and she decided to stay in South Carolina. She could have went anywhere she wanted. Mm. She just decided to stay in South Carolina because she believed in Don. Asia Wilson, Don Staley are the pillars to what we see 
uh, as the South Carolina dynasty right now. It starts with them. And that tradition that Don created with somebody like Asia, and I think that the way South Carolina treats people like Asia and treats people like Don. Asia Wilson has a statue in front of the Colonial Life Arena oh, right wow. now. Oh, wow. A statue. Don is getting a statue, I believe, on Main Street in Columbia, South Carolina. So They really cherish the stars. They cherish their stars, so it makes the Leah Bostons and everybody else want to start coming there and playing for this tradition, this culture that they're building. And I think when you got Don and you got Asia helping the league rise, then what else happens? And mind you, I said it started with Don. I think Caitlin Clark, you know, goes to Iowa. Angel Reese comes to LSU. All of these eyes are starting to get put on college, women's college basketball, started about six, seven years ago, as these people who became the stars of the sport started to grow. When I was paying attention to South Carolina after, you know, after they won their first championship and paying attention to women's basketball, that's when I started to see, you know, the Caitlins and the Angel Reese's. I'm like, oh, these girls are really good. The Paige, Paige Buckets. You, these, gr these girls are really, really good. And I think it all starts with Dawn, but I think Caitlin took everything to a whole other level with her style of play. I, I think uh, I agree with you. I think there's a couple other components. Talk to me. I think Steph Curry yeah. is the cause of the rise of women's basketball. I'm not mad at that. And in the way that Steph changed the game, My he changed the game in a way where it made it more accessible for women and that you could shoot in the way that Caitlin Clark shoots. Dribble, pass. Dribble, pass. And it they looks just as exciting. Yeah. But like back in the day, watching some girl post up and then like shoot a lefty layup was the most boring thing in the fucking world, right? Which they can't dunk. They have no explosiveness. They, they're not powerful around the rim. We, and, and to be honest, in a lot of ways, like we don't even want to see post play like watching the, the the Zach Eady guy, right? I'm sure he'll do great in the NBA, yeah. but he's not like, oh my God, this is the most prolific player I've ever seen. You'd rather watch Zion fucking dunk from the free throw line in college, right? So the male explosiveness was great, but also Steph brought the game beyond the three-point line. And what girls showed us is that they too can shoot. And when they were shooting, like Caitlin was shooting, like these other players were shooting, they've been incredibly effective. It showed us that men will also indulge in that type That's of basketball because right. it wasn't just women watching; men were watching as well. Okay, you so what shows, you know, not only are you making such a great point, man. It, the, the 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 thing that I marvel at. I'm the greatest misogynist ever. It is unbelievable. Yeah, I'm the way that you was able to bring it back <laughs> to men, to the patriarchy. Yeah, was the patriarchy is responsible. Real. Yes, and, this and is by what way, we do. No woman probably caught that. I'm sitting there listening like this guy's one of the greatest Honestly, upholders of patriarchy Charlemagne. ever. If they weren't women, he they would have like, been he able to be catch. He was giving these women these praise. He's like, no, no. <laughs> he be giving these women these praise. He's like, yeah. no, no, no. The greatest. The rise for women's college basketball Steph is Steph Curry. Curry. And you really, oh. it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a bad argument. Just wait to my next part of my point. If you thought that part. I'm well, listening. I'm okay. all in. Let's go. Um, Let's go. They Let's got, go. they got. Under women's college basketball is the greatest because of the patriarchy. Because go. of the patriarchy. Steph changed the game that made the game more accessible for okay. the way women play it. Women started playing it uh, according to the way Steph plays the game. And they can actually compete the way that Steph plays. They can't compete with the explosiveness, right? Okay, so we're right there. Number two. They started to get beautiful. I, I'm just being honest with you. There is a surplus <laughs> of incredibly beautiful women that are playing the game. And they are so much more marketable when they're beautiful. They're stunning, these women. Now, there was always a few <laughs> WNBA players that were stunning. But there weren't this plethora of absolutely beautiful women of all shapes, colors, and sizes. Stunning listen, women y all, y all, running up and down the floor, shooting threes from everywhere. Oh, my God. Y'all listening, and y'all might be upset, but you know he's not lying. This they're, is unfortunately— you know, what, you know what? Instead of saying they're stunning, just say they're very marketable. They're, okay, that's better. There because some then, very— Marketable I was trying women. to speak too truthfully, but the reality is they're <laughs> Angel Reese, very marketable. It's beautiful. Uh, um, Caitlin Van Lilith or whatever, the blonde girl. Haley, Haley Van Lith. Beautiful girl. Cardosa. Beautiful. South Carolina. Very marketable. Um, there's also a, a, a Paige, uh, Paige Buckers. Buckers yeah. is, is very beautiful. Raven okay? Johnson. Like, yeah, I get what you're there's saying. There's tons of beautiful yeah. ones, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so the overall beauty of the league is lifted. And unfortunately... The sports where women are more beautiful, they get more eyeballs. And they play hard as fuck. 
Oh, I cor- tried to watch men's college basketball. I tried to watch the national I don't know championship. Any of them. I don't know who's that playing. Shit Zach Eady is the only one I know. I it was I Connecticut know. versus I don't even know who the fuck they played. <laughs> it was so I, I, I watched know, it. Cares? I was like the first half was 30, 36. I'm like, nobody turn cares. this shit yeah, off. Yeah, this cares. shit looked like women's basketball 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nobody cares. But but the thing with the with the women being more marketable, as you said now, which is a perfect way of uh, describing it, much better than what I was saying. If you look at like women's beach volleyball. It's on ESPN because unfortunately for women, when they are more beautiful, it increases eyeballs. It does. It's when women are more beautiful, we're more into the things that they're doing. It's unfortunate. But the reality is their beauty mixed with their elite skill has made them more interesting than watching the men play. We I can think, agree with that. I think it's the elite skill Why are you upset? For... <laughs> Why are you upset? I Taylor think I, wants I, to disagree, I, but she can't. No, no, I, think, I think it's the elite <laughs> skill <wants> first. <laughs> I do. I really think it's the elite skill first. And I've never thought women's basketball players weren't attractive. Like, they've always been attractive. I just think that this is... Uh, Charlamagne. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about this. It's the, it really, truly is the elite skill set, to your earlier point, that I will say, when I see Caitlin Clark, I see Steph Curry. When I what see uh, when I see Malay, Malaysia Fawali of South Carolina, I see Kyrie Irving. Like, they really do ball there, like them. no question about yes. that skill. And all, all in all, all of their skill has risen, and the game has gotten much better, much more enticing. But what has also risen is the fact that, like, they're all models now. There's all yeah. these beautiful women that are yeah. out here playing sport. And when beautiful women do things, we watch. And then when they do things at an incredibly high level, yeah. they become superstars. Do Look you at remember the Olympics. When- you see you see these athletes. If there's a beautiful woman in the Olympics, she will become the most marketable athlete on the planet. Yeah. You've seen it with that girl who was, uh, she's fake Chinese and ended up snowboarding for them. She went to Stanford. Eileen Gu or something like that. She was American and then that she went over. Idea. Really? Yeah. She was American and then she she uh, traded in her country, the fucking trader. But she oh, I thought you were about so- to say transitioned. I was like, I didn't know she you could trans- do that. She was half. She's half uh, Chinese or something like that. But then she ended up playing. But she was the most marketable athlete on the fucking planet. She's a stunningly beautiful woman Yo. who is brilliant, but also incredibly good at, I think, snowboarding. I don't know if y'all remember. I said one time, I said that when you watch women's college basketball, it's like all the girls play like Steph Curry or Tim Duncan. Yes. And that is a very high level of basketball. Yes. If, you, if you know anything about Tim Duncan, if you know anything, of course you know about Steph Curry. That is a high level of basketball. I love seeing these girls bang out in the paint. I loved when Aaliyah Bo- I, seeing Aaliyah Boston bang out in the paint, Asia Wilson bang out in the paint, Cardosa bang out in the paint. I love it. Like they was they got these big girls down low. They couldn't do nothing with them. Iowa couldn't do nothing with Cardoso, yo. <laughs> Come on, son. Come on, son. What did I say? He's speaking like Meek. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, wait, do you think the NIL plays a part into it? Because now that they're able to be marketed a bit more and make Ooh, money. That's, that's a good argument that, like, the Maybe. they're incentivized. Yeah. The companies are incentivized to make these players bigger. I also think the internet just blowing up. Attention. All of them have their own uh, TikTok accounts and Instagram accounts, and they're, they're blowing up like. It's attention. Yeah. Like if you like, like this was the highest uh this, the South Carolina game versus Iowa was the highest most Dude. what most viewed basketball game men women's or anything over the last 5 7 years it's like they said 18.7 million no, people watched it, and at the peak 24 million people watched no, the game it was great my group chats are talking about this not the male games mm. And it's fucking awesome, and the girls should be stoked. And I'll be honest with you, the way that they're handling it, like I've seen a lot of the press conferences, and there's like a decorum that they all have. That's right. They are, there's an elegance that they That's all right. speak to it. There's that girl that I think it was Paige Buck- Buckers. Paige Buckets. Paige Buckets. She was like, one play doesn't, uh, you know, make a game. That's and, right. And uh, I should have played better in these other times. It was like a very mature approach to what happened in the game. And you've seen it from a bunch of them, especially in losses. And it's like, uh, I thought it was, yeah, it's really great. It was yeah, really great. Man. I, it's, and it's going to be even, it's going to be great next year because South Carolina got uh, Malaysia Fawali coming back, mm. Tanisha Johnson. She, make sure, make sure that's her name, Taylor. Shout Tessa out. Tessa Johnson or the Tessa Johnson. Yeah. 
It's Tessa Johnson, right? Shout out uh, Steph for making this possible, man. <laughs> I don't think enough credit has gone to Steph for making this beautiful game. Well, why does St. Caitlin Clark change the game too, though? Yeah, Tessa Johnson. Huh? I knew you was going to be upset about that one. <laughs> Caitlin Clark. No, I'm asking. No, I'm just. I don't know. I don't watch. Because she's the greatest female basketball player ever. Why is she? Because she. That's how she changed the game. She's she no she just shoots. how did Michael Jordan change the game? Yeah, no, she just Taylor. shoots the ball incredibly well and from distance that most women just haven't shot from. Why do you why do you think Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time? Why do you think he changed the game of basketball? I don't know, it's whatever y'all be saying. Because he's the goat. Caitlyn is a fucking goat. Why do you think she isn't? Because she's white. Because you're racist. And you hate I white people. I literally just I'm the only white question. person you like. <laughs> do you think that the media was giving her too much attention? Yes. No. God damn! No, she, no, no, no. God you damn. made a point too. Like even, God damn, yo. even no. There was a report that you know the um, what they call the oh, cops God. won <laughs> the gang cops won, but um, no, nope. I didn't say False. it right. Well, look, they said that they won, right? But then had a picture of fucking Caitlyn. Well, that was CNN, but white. that's not that's not Caitlyn's fault. Here's the thing: it's not, I'm not saying it is her fault. You know what it's people? Like, you know yeah, what people are forgetting? Uh, at the end of the game. When the, the, the Gamecocks were about to win, a lot of people got upset because they put the camera on Caitlyn, put up Caitlyn's stat line, all the things she accomplished in, in college. But this is what they forgot. Her coach called timeout. So she could get so the So she could ovation. get that long. Yeah. Her coach called timeout with 20.7 seconds left, pulled her out the game. So she could get the applause. So she can get that applause Final and get that game. love. As soon as that was over, they went right to South Carolina. She's <laughs> like, and also like, like she right to the game. Cup. She carried all the scrutiny. She carried all the expectations. Yes. People are so curious about her and her journey. And they were more curious about her and her journey than the Gamecocks this year. Whether that's fair or not that's doesn't right. matter. That's where the attention lied. And she brought the attention to that last game. And and uh, Dawn Staley uh, mentioned that. I thought it was beautiful that that's she right. even brought that. She's and, just, and somebody asked me, they said, can, can, can we stop talking about Caitlyn being white? And I said, no. And the reason the answer has to be no is because do you, st do you stop talking about Barack Obama being black? No. We do. do you stop talking about Tiger Woods being black? No. We've Will you ever stop talking about Eminem being white? No. You know why? Why? Because when you're a person that excels yeah. somewhere where you where usually your 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 race doesn't excel, yeah. you will always be looked at. In that way, they're all because uh -huh. you're not used to seeing Kate, uh, uh, any player play like that. But especially some little white girl from Iowa, mm. you're not used to hearing somebody rap like that. But especially some white dude from, from Detroit. Detroit, Michigan, you've never seen a black president. That is the reason Barack Obama is Barack Obama, and Barack Obama's not black. He's just gay. <laughs> <laughs> right? He just, right he, I was going to huh? say he's oh, just another long line of oh. decent Democratic presidents. He's the John F. Kennedys, the Bill Clintons, also that. whoever. Also but that. because he's black, now nah, it's a whole fucking he's thing. A, he's a history lesson. It's a whole thing. That's what I'm saying. Tiger Woods the same way. You don't see a Tiger black Woods. man dominate golf like that. Yeah. So it, it is what it is. He'd just be another victim of uh, spousal abuse. <laughs> <laughs> he really would. Bills, Why don't we ever talk about that? These white bitches from Norway beating the shit out of American blacks. That's right. Wasn't just Jonathan Major's wife? Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, ex-girlfriend. Talk that Wasn't shit, she Norwegian? What, right? I think right? so, yeah. What happened with Al? Sweden. Yeah. Trying to take down a black. Mm-hmm. They are <laughs> racist. Not like how they you are say. racist. <laughs> trying to take down a black. They trying like... to take down a black. <laughs> Taylor, pull up the bills. Taylor, let's pay Taylor, bills. come on. All right, let's stop. Let's stop and pay some bills. Priceline, what's happening? When it comes to travel, we all have that happy place. Mine is Anguilla. Okay, uh, I know plenty of people like the Caribbean like I do. They like the beach. They like ski slopes. Couples get away, man. There's nothing like a vacation or even a visit to that best friend you haven't seen in way too long. And Priceline wants to get you there for a happy price so you never have to miss a trip. My happy place, I just told y'all, is Anguilla, okay? My favorite place on the planet. Go there every summer. I'm um, going to buy a property there really, really soon. And uh, salute the Priceline, because thanks to Priceline's VIP family feature, you can go to your happy place more often while earning deals up to five times faster with a group. When one person from the squad travels, everyone gets more deals, and you even get to choose your crew. It doesn't have to be your actual family. It could be your neighbor, your roommate, your mailman, anyone. The more you travel, the more you save. So download the Priceline app today to save up to 60% off select hotels and go to your happy price with Priceline.
All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because this podcast has been brought to you by Hard Dicks. Blue Chew, same active ingredient that's inside Viagra or Cialis, but this is the one we rock with, the one your girl deserves, the one your wife deserves, the one your side chick deserves, the one your side side deserves, okay? The one that bisexual girl that wants to be straight for one evening with you deserves. Don't give her some trash dick. She goes back to vagina. That's on you. But if you chew it up, you chew it out, okay? And you're going to get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping before you deliver that dick. Five dollar ship. <laughs> Go to bluetooth.com. Use the promo code idiots. Okay, get your first month free. Enjoy. They'll enjoy. Let's get back to the show. Man, this Joker Two trailer look crazy. Talk to me now. Nah, this look dope. Joe Queen Phoenix back as the Joker. Lady Gaga playing Harley Quinn. I uh, fucks with that. Uh, what else we got, Taylor? Do we have any asking idiots? Uh, do we have some asking idiots, Taylor? Tell her. No, Tell her. This is crazy. We always have more prep for Brilliant Idiots than we do for Breakfast Club. I love that. Chance the Rapper's getting divorced. <laughs> is this the... Wait, I thought we are doing uh, Ask an Idiot. No, we are. I just screamed that out. Chance the Rapper's getting divorced. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ask an Idiot. Anika.Alexandria. Oh, this is a great question. This is a great question, Anika. Um, man, that looks very close to Anunnaki. Salute to all the Anunnaki out there. Hell yeah. Um, what's one woman outside of your wife that you idolize for your daughters? Schultz? Mm -hmm. What's one woman outside of my wife that you idolize for your daughters? That I idolize for my daughter. I'll be honest, I don't really idolize people based on their gender. You know, but I think that there are, there are aspects of my mother that I really admire and I want my daughter to know about. I think my mom's incredibly hardworking and ambitious. And uh, yeah, I want her to understand those things and experience those things 100%. Um, yeah, but I've never thought of something like, oh, just, this is just a woman thing that, that she needs to do. Well, what about like a role model? Like my mom, for sure. <laughs> Also, like my wife's mom, to be honest with you, like everything that she's going through and her perseverance within it, 100%. Yeah, how about you? Uh, my daughter's got some fly-ass aunties, man. Like, it's a fly, really dope circle of women that are around my daughters. I mean, of course, you know, the, the, your, your grandma, the grandmas speak for themselves. This one here. Huh. I just wanted to show off this legacy of resilience jacket. Uh, the grandmas speak for themselves, but then it's just like, you know, it can be like like my 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 wife got a dope circle of friends, you know, I got a dope circle of friends. We all friends. It can be anybody from like my my wife's great college friend. We all have great circle of friends. We got some really dope women around us that um, you know, our, our daughters can look up to. Because I mean, I'm surrounded by by women. You know what I'm saying? I'm literally surrounded by women on, on, on both sides, whether it's all my wife's friends, like all her college friends, you know, friends that I've met throughout the business that, that have became our friends. Like, my daughter's just got a really, really dope tribe of uh, women to Amazing. look up to. Amazing. Yeah, nobody I want, I don't want to, nobody I want, I don't want to say none of their names because all you unhealed heathens will start looking people up. We don't need that. Fuck away from my, my energy. We don't need that. Okay. Uh, Vanessa Alvarez says, just found God. Any advice on forming a relationship with JC? Who is JC? Jesus Christ. But you you know his daddy now. So through his daddy, you'll, you'll learn about the son. I mean, yeah, what God did you find? I mean, isn't he all? The embodiment of. No, nah, I thought God I thought... was the father. Jesus was the son. He is, but I think Jesus is the embodiment of God. God. Yeah. The human form. So what are we? The Bible says God created man in his image according to his likeness. Flawed creatures. And we are trying our best to live that. Jesus might have been flawed too. No, like, he wasn't. And I think that's the difference. I think, we, I think that's what we tell ourselves. Yes, that is the mythology yeah, that we I choose to we, believe. I think we tell ourselves Jesus was a perfect being. And by the way, he probably was because we're all perfectly imperfect. You know, like why can't, why, why couldn't Jesus have flaws? I think that's what made him so special is that he's the one man that was not flawed. And that we should also, we should all try to aspire to live our life the way that he would, even though we know we will fail. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a pastor. I just feel like 
why would God only make one model of it? <laughs> well, I think like, it, we wouldn't have to go through any of this. This I, is God we're talking about. But I, I, need, I, I need, I need, I need right, so, so maybe God, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. What I think is really beautiful about it is it's going, hey, you're gonna fuck up. That's who you are as a human being. But what you should try to do is strive to not fuck up and strive to behave like that guy would but behave. But why make that model? Why make instead why, of just making us all make, perfect? Yeah, why make it? Why I don't make know, do you like airplane? Fun? But I'm saying, why make the airplane? God knows we but need fun. make everybody else hot air balloons. But God knows we need fun. He we knows still, we like fucked we up shit. We have fun perfect? No, we can't. Yes, we could. A bunch of Jesuses walking around would not be funny. Bro, Jesus walked on water. Jesus turned water to wine. Yeah. Jesus made that's only two impressive. loaves of bread and two pieces of fish and fed multiple people. But that's only impressive because we can't do it. If all of us could do it, we wouldn't even be looking up to him. Nah, bro. That shit is way flyer than anything I've heard any of us do. That's what. That's because the we, point. Because we can't do it. Because we can't do it. So imagine if all of us could do it. It wouldn't be that flyer, be regular. No more. We all walk in shorts. Watch your mic. It's the equivalent Schultz. to us walking right Schultz. now. Shorts. <laughs> yeah. Shorts. Yeah. Shorts. Yeah. Shorts. yeah. <laughs> You've been around long enough. <laughs> I'm going to say something that I may edit. All right. There's a big, big difference. Between? Hanging out with millionaires <laughs> on a motherfucking yacht, <laughs> okay? Then partying with people just locally in a basement somewhere in New York City. Is it not? Yeah, sure. Both might be equally fun. Yeah. But one really, really makes you feel like, wow. Don't you think? <sighs> Yeah, no. You're lying. I've seen you in the Hamptons, bro. It's <laughs> I, nice. Your turn up is different it's now. It's nice. I see your turn up now, bro. I see your turn up now. Don't, don't try that shit with but me. But I'm always with my homies no matter where I go. Yeah, with your homies, but, but y'all all came up together yeah. because everybody getting to the money now. But it wouldn't be fun just to hang out with the motherfuckers that got money. Being, it's only fun to be around the homies. If everybody, if all of us were as perfect as Jesus, yeah. it's like being a billionaire. I, I understand probably, probably better. I understand what you're going with that. Yes. But I think the reason why we're excited by those billionaire shits is because we're not billionaires. So the, the opportunity to just taste it for a week or a weekend is really enticing to us. But why couldn't we all just be on that level? Because that's not how humans are. We value these things that we cannot have. I think we need to talk to God. <laughs> I think somebody Let's needs to, do it. Like, there's no I, I, I think we might Let's need go to, to church, bro. I actually think that if we revisit the story of Jesus and don't look at Jesus as perfect, but look at Jesus as a man who could who 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 uh who was flawed just like us but chose to live in a way where people thought he was perfect, that would be more of a story. That's Maybe. more of a story. Maybe. But again, I don't know the story. I could have got it wrong. My understanding was that he was perfect and all of us are flawed, and that's why we should follow him. And that he was willing to, but maybe he was flawed. I, I don't we, fucking we, know. We, we follow people, as we follow people who we watch evolve. So, like if you're a person who we used to watch and you was like incredibly flawed, you did fucked up things, or even just let's let's just keep keep uh physical appearance in it. If you was fat and you was yeah. out of shape, but then we saw you get into shape and yeah. get your life together, you follow that. Yeah. You are inspired by that. Absolutely. So I don't see why it couldn't be the same. I just don't understand why you go from a perfect model to say, you know what? This perfect thing didn't cut it. I'm gonna make something that's flawed. Well, why? I think he started out with just people. And then he made the perfect model. Yeah. So we were all just here, right? I don't think Abraham was perfect. And yeah, because Adam and Eve weren't perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Eve. Didn't we fuck up once she took the apple? Yeah. Yo, this is wild. Hold on now. Eve. So if, let's just say from based off what the Bible said, yeah. the first two people on this earth were Adam and Eve. Eve fucked up. Eve was incredibly flawed, caused Adam right. to flaw, yep. right? Yep. Cain and Abel were their only children. Cain killed Abel, Fucked jealousy, up. envy, incredibly flawed, then went off and found a wife. Don't make any sense. I know. I know. Right? But so you made all of these flawed individuals to make the one perfect person to be down here with all of these flawed fucks. And then those flawed fucks Kill killed your one perfect model. Mm -hmm. What if? And maybe this is what Christianity is all about. Talk to me. God created this perfect model to come down here and try to change all of us and get us to as close to perfection as possible or let us see that perfection is, is attainable and we failed. Bro, that is Christianity. 
That is? Yes. <laughs> Guys, I'm not a pastor. Like, Guys, if you're... <laughs> I'm not a pastor. Uh, I'm not idiot. <laughs> like, uh, that is you're really dumb. You're right. <laughs> I'm not and a pastor. And if you're really smart, you're right, too. I'm not a pastor. This has been the Brilliant <laughs> Idiots Podcast. the Brilliant Idiots? Okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we love you. We appreciate yes, you. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and we're going to see think, you next week. Well, let me know if this is... <laughs> cut it but off. But no, but cut no, it Let me know if this is Christianity. I do want to know. Was that Christianity for real? I think so, bro. exactly Really? Yeah. I don't know. Sinning, so he sent his son to try to save us. And then we killed him? Yes. He sent his one and only son. For what? Hey, stop the podcast. <laughs> stop the podcast. <laughs> stop the podcast. We'll, I'm really there'll be more to next week. Out. There will be more next we week. We need to bring a pastor so, on, you Did you grow up Jehovah's Witness? I would love that. Yeah, but I've always made those, I've always asked those questions. I would love that. Can we bring a pastor on? Yeah, That'd be awesome. Absolutely. We've had one on before. Pastor Carl Lynch was on before. But I've always <laughs> asked those questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As always, Andrew already did, but as always, if you listen to the podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. What if you listen to this podcast and think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit? I don't know Jesus! You're probably right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.